Yes, this is Oakland. Oakland is a city of beautiful homes and views, a fine place for living, working, and raising children. But in Oakland's future, as in all larger cities, there is an internal threat. There is an internal threat. There is an internal threat. How did the Bay Area's housing crunch get this bad? People are talking about gentrification. Because they make a lot of money, they bid up housing prices. People have generally heard the term, but they're not quite familiar with what it exactly means. And so that has created a lot of increase in housing prices, as well as gentrification. Ah, yes, the G word. Our understandings of gentrification are quite confused. No city in the Bay Area has seen the rapid remaking of neighborhoods quite like Oakland. The term gentrification refers to processes by which higher income or higher status people relocate to or invest in low-income urban neighborhoods. Look below and you'll see streets lined with tents and RVs, the last resort for those who've been priced out. They inflate property values, displace low-income people, and fundamentally alter the culture and character of the neighborhood. 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 Yeah. My name is Stone Ramsey. Stand up. I want to tell you a story about homelessness. I want to tell you a story about gentrification. But it's going to be the dark side. And so don't, don't In it till it's over, we're getting this what I sold up. Selling all stack of books and quotas. Ugly bitches know you, approach them. Tell them pack dope for you stroke them. First case, ghost them. Consistently in motion. Smoke bridge with the coast inch. In the streets of Oakland, made to no commotion. All the motive bins fully loaded just to coasting. Prince to a coke bitch, suck dick for blow hits. Grind all night, buy pills for the focus. Ride with no L, deliver it to the most spent. Six in the morning, I'm home in my face. We be out on, on human, <laughs> human exit, flying a flag, just trying to hustle up food money. So if you come by, just honk the horn. Just, just say hi. Give us anything. We need charcoal. Um, we have barbecue facilities in the place. We need blankets for sure. Blankets and sheets, man. Uh, we just want to feel needed, and we like to, we like to be a part of something. The disposition of displacement is unfortunate, just based off the fact of. Here it is, what we talked about earlier off camera, was we're dealing with situations where people automatically assume just because someone's living on the street that they're a drug addict mm -hmm. or they're uh, indulging in alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And there's a great percentage of people that are living in those streets that aren't addicted to anything. Several individuals who live in these homeless encampments, which have been known as Tent City, mm -hmm. uh, who actually have jobs. They, they'll go to work every day. Unfortunately, they just can't afford a place to stay. Oakland City Council took a step last night toward addressing the homeless crisis. Members approved a measure to move people from encampments into temporary shelters as they wait for permanent housing. Oakland Mayor Libby Schaaf joins us now, and, and I know, Mayor, that this is something that you were pushing hard for. This is an outdoor sort of navigation center. It will have these so-called tough shed shelters. Uh, you've got to be happy about this. We have to take action now. This is a very temporary measure, but it allows us to get people off of the sidewalk. Once we have picked an encampment and offered them the opportunity to move into the tough shed shelter, we will clear that sidewalk and we will keep it clear. If you have a piece of crack cocaine, no bigger than this quarter that I'm holding in my hand, one quarter of one dollar, we passed a law through the leadership of Senator Thurman and myself and others, a law that says if you're caught with that, you go to jail for five years. Wait, wait, I just laid out the bag. It's 2.06. 2.07 without the bag. How long is how long is that? What do you think? think about Hunter? You're done. You, There's a video of him arguing with a cooker about how much crack he has. What do you think about that, Mr. President? Okay.
in one of the greatest places in the Black Panther history and all the history that we got. They trying to, uh, one of our icons. Shout out to the salute to the icon, Mac Dre. Somebody paint him on the wall with blue eyes? What? I'm out of this world, not your run of the millin. My name is Furl, I'm the owner of the billing. You know what that mean, y'all? You know what that mean? That mean years down the line, he ain't gonna even be black no more. My definition of gentrification is a prime example of what you see going on in a lot of Bay Area cities like San Francisco, Oakland, Pittsburgh, Richmond, Vallejo. You know, these people, they know that we worth a lot of money in these, these properties. So they try to buy them for cheap. I mean, they're going to flip them up and split these houses and bring in all these other races into our communities. Independent families that was there, they're no longer having their businesses. They're being bought out by these supermarkets and giant retail stores. You know, they're taking food off of their family's plate, you know, spiking up the rent and everything and kicking us out of here. So that's what's going on in a lot of cities in the Bay Area, gentrification. That's my definition of it. I've never, I've heard of gentrification before, but I've never been in a place where it was happening until, until this. But it, it's just unbelievable how fast it can happen. Mm -hmm. yeah, the only people, the only black people left in San Francisco are in public housing. Let me, let me, so let me get this straight so I won't lose this train of thought. So the gentrification that's happening in Oakland right now actually started here in San Francisco. Well, I, I think that's fair to say, yeah. The people who were renting, people who were, people who, you know, we had the highest, in the black community in San Francisco, we had the highest rate of home ownership of anywhere in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, San Francisco is really not a homeowner town. It's, it's always been a rental town. But, but, but anyway, as far as home ownership is concerned, see, people came to, here to work at the shipyard and during the war, they saved up their money, they lived up there in the barracks, they saved up their money, they bought a house, they bought another house, they bought a, bought a business on 3rd Street. People got prosperous. And uh, um, so all the flatlands here in the neighborhood were black homeowners. And what pushed them out was the foreclosure crisis that started in 2008. This is a rebranding of Oakland for the newcomers. Like the Oaklandish or Oakland-ish? Well, I think I think that's an interesting aspect in itself because you know when I grew up in Oakland in in the 80s and 90s, we was from the O. We was from the town. You know, then you had people who was from New Oakland in the birth of Oaklandish. You know, Oaklandish. You know, but you know anything that's Oakland, if, if it's black-ish, it's not black. If it's Oaklandish, it's not Oakland. When I first came here, you never saw anybody out on the street at night. Um, everybody took people in. But then the housing authority, the little HUD, changed the rules and said that we had to be on the lease um, in order to stay there. And uh, so they were kicking everybody out who, you know, who had any, and if you had any, any kind of um, uh, prison record, you couldn't live in public housing at all. Why won't go? Man, these police come over here, man, trying to push all my peoples up out of here. Tell them they got to go. And they ain't giving them nowhere to stay, man. And they just taking your shit and throwing it in the garbage can without your permission. We almost made me cry up in here because you were saying, man.
You almost made me cry because you was giving me love, but it was fake, man. A solution that could possibly be uh, something that bridges those two things is our mayor inoculating rent control. Libby Schaaf, the mayor, got $25 million for emergency housing and help for the homeless. Well, what she did was she bought tough sheds that you would keep your dog or your bike in and put people in them. You did this as an answer to see whether or not the people would go for you housing them in dog houses. I've even been told this. We can't house the homeless in those banner buildings is because they're going to burn them down. They're going to they gonna, uh, fill them up with trash. They're going to do it. Well, if they had a home, if they had their own house, they're going to fill it up with trash. They're going to fill it up with whatever they want. But ain't that better than them filling it up on the streets? Right now, we're just picking up the debris, the first debris, and cleaning up the area. We're just doing a barbecue run. It's between the tent, they keep it halfway decent. Stop starting fires, keep your area clean. That way, the uh, citizens won't complain because that's how we get caught. Coincidentally, Caltrans was sued and lost. We're doing a documentary. Everything I'm catching is in the documentary. All right, are you cool with being in the documentary? I'm not. Okay, okay. Go right over there where the other people are sitting. Okay. So I gotta stand there. It's so good. What you doing? I'm trying to get it together. I'm trying to get my hair and makeup done. How are you doing? It don't look like you're trying, baby. Look like you're doing. What's up? It's that ball tonight. Where are you trying to go? Maybe we're just gonna go paint the town. Let's do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Say less. Ready. 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 Uh. Ready. 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 The mechanic. Ready. 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 I'm ready. 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 Ready, I'm ready, 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 ready. I'm ready, 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 ready. I got the gift, underground gap gift. Crystals on my neck and on my motherfucking catfish. I ain't a gymnast, but the coke do a backflip. I got the green, I ain't talking about cactus. Talking about going out of state and catch the package. I'ma grease these niggas like a fat bitch. I got the wax and the plastic, chapstick. Chain smoker with a motherfucking habit. Truck full of Reggie, the low so heavy. I take the truck and he'll take the Chevy. Gave the truck back with a bag of fetty. He left his cowboy hat in the back of the Chevy. Fast, fast, fast. Mario and Dreddy. Hurricane Katrina, nigga, break the levy. I asked too short about blowjob Betty. He said she got cola the and Manola Giuseppe. I'm ready, 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 ready. ready. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. This is Mad Mondays. I'm your host, Wide Out, aka Two Man. You already know what it is. Thank y'all for tuning in on Twitch TV for slash Bay Life Radio, as well as Instagram and Facebook. Thank y'all. Thank y'all, man. Happy Monday. It's another Monday. Um, God is good all the time. And none of this would be possible without my little big cuss, Igor Beach. What he do? What he do? What he do, little big cuss? Oh, man. Just chilling. Just chilling, man. One more Monday. One yeah, more man. Monday. What's this? <laughs> this Epis- season three. Episode, episode 
I think it's 12. It might be 12, 13. Yeah. It's one of them up. One of them right there. <laughs> hey, we've been cooking. Yeah, we've been getting it in, man. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for the guests as well as uh, the uh, people that are checking us out every week, man. We've over a year now straight, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's a blessing. Uh, how was your week, man? Since last, well, shit. Was we, now nah, we weren't here last week because little nah, nephew birthday yeah, turned yeah. fifteen. Happy birthday, nephew! Yeah, yeah. And then he shook me for his little partners. <laughs> you know, well, I tell you, it's all good though. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, we was out doing whatever we did, and uh, the week been kind of slow. The week been kind of slow. We've been doing what we do. Okay, for sure. Somebody at the Dizzo. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was my other guess. Uh, we, we, what you had going on this week? Uh, you know, this week was or this slow. week we did just pass. We did. The, uh, I went out there to the Wayne Hayes pop up at CCM Studios. That was cool. I got a chance to meet uh, the president of Livewire. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, that was what's up, and then uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, we uh, should I had a busy fucking week. Um, it was well, the weekend was busy. Um. We had the uh, we had the last of uh, the uh, town night out um, on ninety six. Yeah. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to everybody that was uh, at any park um, during these last six weeks uh, for town night out. Man, that was a beautiful thing. Um, it was nine parks throughout Oakland. Um, I actually did two of them. I did uh, I did the one on ninety six, and then I did the one on uh, Brockhurst in the west. But, you know what I'm saying, nice turnouts. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They was giving away free food, gifts, uh, prizes, raffles, um, shit. Even 96, they had the basketball tournament, which um, went every week for $3,000. So then the last one this Friday was for 5000 Right. So the cats from Sunnyside, they 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 took that shit home. I think they won like Yeah, but they actually won like five of the six weeks. So them niggas came up thirty four hundred. I did the what? math already. <laughs> them niggas came up thirty thirty four hundred a piece though. Hey, they came you know ball. what I'm saying? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So that that was cool. And then they uh they actually had uh they had performances this time. I mean the last uh the last Friday. Uh shout out to uh I Stevie. Shout out to uh, Stacy Hogg, which is in the building today. Um, and who else was on? Oh, Dyson the singer. Shout out to my nigga Dyson. And they had uh, uh, I Stevie brought out Ty Austin. Am I saying his name right? Oster. Ty, Ty Oster. Ty Oster, yeah, my brother from West Oakland. Uh, so it was a good look. And then Jay Stalin actually uh, did a motivational speech, which was dope. I actually taped that. So if y'all, my Facebook friends, y'all can see it. Um, Stroll down a little bit on my page and check it out, though. But I seen him... Um, I seen him Saturday and just told him, like, bro, that was dope. You know what I'm saying? Just to, I mean, somebody from the streets. And he actually said he was from 96, something I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? He said right. he spent more time on 96 than he did in the West. But he put the West on the map. I thought that nigga was from West Oakland. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yes. right. But, uh, yeah, man, that shit was big. And then uh, Saturday night, you know what I'm saying, uh, we was at uh, Jeffrey's Inner Circle from uh, the taping of Mario uh, Hodges' uh his uh, comedy special that he got out, man. Shout out to everybody that slid through uh, Jeffrey's this Saturday. That shit was lit. Um, I thought I was just doing comedy, you know what I'm saying? But uh, shit, he was like, shit, you hosting. So I'm like, oh, shit is going down then, nigga, if I'm hosting. But I didn't know that um, he had special. Oh, I knew about Mr. Fab, so I was able to bring out Mr. Fab. And then, nigga, they gave me an opportunity to bring out, nigga, my favorite rap group from Oakland, the delinquents. Um, so that was, nigga, that was, that was big for me. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was major for me. Um, who else was on there? Jose. Um, I be fucking his last name up. He on his way. Um, Jose, uh, Jay Rich, uh, Rico the Great, and uh, Mario Hodge. Close that shit out, man. But that shit was lit. Uh, shout out to the DJ. What's that nigga named? Michael Stokes. You know, bro. Oh, yeah, I know Michael yeah, Stokes. Yeah, he had that shit lit. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers was dancing in their seats and all kind of shit. Uh, shout out to Mr. Jeffries for... Uh, Letting uh, brothers like uh, me and, you know what I'm saying, everybody else that has talent still um, have a platform for us. You know what I'm saying? Black-owned business um, still doing this thing, man. So shout-out to Jeffries. Uh, shout-out to Mario Hodge uh, for putting me on the show. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was a last-minute thing, but I was able to get on it, and I hosted it, and I, I killed that shit. That's what people have been telling me, so I'm, I'm going to ride with that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um uh, who else was there? Yeah, man, nigga had uh, Jay Stalin came through. Uh, 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 uh Don Trail from uh, Forex from the Mechanic slid through. Uh, shit, little Daryl was in that motherfucker. Uh, nigga, he had, yeah, it was, it was town business in that motherfucker for real. Um, so yeah, that shit was cool as fuck. Like that shit was cool. I, I'm still on cloud nine from that show. 
he like actually stepped the bar up for niggas throwing shows and comedy niggas. I'm like, oh, he had cameras and all kind of shit. So I'm like, oh shit, yeah. If if, if them niggas don't do it, 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 it I'm gonna step my game up from that show. Just just peeping the whole shit. You know what I'm Come saying? Come on, so, man. You remember when we used to have the cameras and we filmed it? Well, nigga, we we need like to do we it again. Put out no, a DVD. But, no, but this nigga had he, he had uh, mobile cameras. Them niggas was walking around and doing hell of shit, but them white boys did their motherfucking thing. Um, yeah, that shit that shit was lit. Uh, shout out to the wise guys. It was their weekend. It just passed, so they had like shit cracking on uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then they had the. Uh, the uh the pic not not picnic barbecue um you got to get that right you can't say picnic niggas don't know the uh the uh, history of picnic you right look that shit up we don't we don't do picnics we do barbecues <laughs> but uh they had they function and shit which was actually next door to uh Jeffrey Saturday night they had that motherfucker moving it was dumbass thick nigga I was like oh this look like old school town shit and I ain't heard about nothing bad, so that's a plus. You know what I'm saying? That's definitely a plus, though. But uh, shit, what else, man? Yesterday, I fucked around and stayed home uh, most of the day and then got up last minute and uh, slid down to the uh, photo culture. Uh, if y'all ain't never been there, they got a day party every Sunday that uh, that goes down. I got there late, but, yeah, I, I've, I've been hearing about it, so I was like, man, let me go down here and see what it looked like. And actually ran into Sway. Shout out to Sway was out here this weekend. Uh, very good dude, humble brother. Uh, yeah, man. So I just I've been juiced. I've been juiced uh, all the way up till today, man. And then went to work today and shit here for the podcast. So I'm I'm good. I'm hella good. Um, what you got? Uh, yeah. What do you, um? Damn, we need to we need to throw another show, but for show we need to throw another show. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we need to throw another show soon. Um, I got some shit going on. You got some shit going on. Um. Yeah, I'm just juiced though, bro. I'm juiced. I can't even uh I can't even call it. Oh, uh if y'all haven't got the Delinquents new album, go cop that shit. It just uh came out. It's on all platforms. So check it out. Dumbass slap. That's all I'm bumping right now. Like I I go through the whole fucking album. You know what I'm saying? I just like let the shit just play. Cause they spin some gems on there too, man. And I'm just happy that they actually made another album. Cause I remember seeing them at uh I remember seeing them at Cool Water shot the riding in Cool Water. There it go, boom. Cop that shit. There it go right there. That's what it looked like. Um, and I was like, man, I even did a live. And you know what I'm saying? I had went live and shit was talking to him like, man, yeah, we need a reunion. We need a reunion out, man. And three years later, nigga, they got it. So shout out to the delinquents. They still got it. Shit still slap. Um, I'm excited about today's show. I'm excited about everybody's show, though. But I'm excited about this show because um, I have a power couple that's in the building. And uh, they're going to talk about what they talk about. But we finna go into a commercial right quick, and we'll be back after these messages. Thank everybody for tuning in. Also, we do got a call-in number. Um, if y'all want to call in and talk, uh, tap in with us, it's 510-563-7819. Once again, 510-563-7819. And, uh, yeah, after that, uh, we'll be back with the stewards. <laughs> this is Mad Mondays. So obsessed with the stress that my brain feels the strain. It's hard in the street, punk suckers ain't feeling me. Brothers run up with their gun up, trying to put the steel in me. Really see hills be the layback. I play that role for most, so say that for sway Zach. I say Jack, your ghost. The host of the streets, the feast, the transportation. Don't make me have to emancipate your proclamation. The nation stationary, so I worry. Uncle Sam's got a plan to scam us in a hurry. So don't fake in front, that's all they want. But I got piles of fun. Compiled in trunks, ka clunk. Punks and doubles, get the shovels with my crews off brews. Punk suckers is in troubles, cause doubles the quickness. Times tense the sickness. Four poles get mashed quick for lacking fast tactics. They jack us by profession and asking stupid questions. I'm asking if they stepping, I'm quick to cave they guessing. It's a lesson that I'm teaching on the borderline of preaching. But I wouldn't bore your mind, so I keep it street to reach in. To the hood where it could do some good. See you riding in high siding, but people steadily dividing. But I've been wearing on both sides of the gate with team books, team 
crooks and cream Folks to keep stuff straight But wait, what's your fate? I hope not what I'm thinking is sinking the nine existence with no mental contingence Man, all I can say is I wish you would Hope you don't end up a grain of dust in these three hills of sugar A struggle. I pay to play, but ain't no way I write my strife and bubble. Troubles, all I'm thinking, drinking. I'm mischievous things I do in the streets to survive. You wouldn't believe it, kid. I leave you dead for the cream in your life. For my dreams, red beams and silent screams is the killing scene. Fulfilling teams with the tools that they need. Only fools don't succeed in the streets, cruel indeed. And you call it greed and stupidity. Brothers call it truces, cause my juices lose my enemies. And my remedies, cashola, cutting Coca Cola. My pockets getting Swollen, my mind's getting older, bolder now. Quick to fold your power and dump your body in the ground where it can't be found. Blah. All you can say is I must have misunderstood you, but too late. You're a simple grain of dust in these three hills of sugar. I've got to find a getaway. Never thought that I'd ever see 20 in the hall scooping honeys on the wall making money. Yo, it's my man from way back. Give a brother love, I tell him cuz I got the dub sacks. Then we dip and hit the exit. I tell him don't sweat kids cuz I got the tech like sex. It is hard in the ghetto streets, but metal to make you settle. Mash the pedal and then we dash to the ghetto. Uh, pigs, they sweat us. Don't matter who's driving, I'm striving to stay alive. Forget a nine to five when I can pump my grip on the ass. Seems if it's up and grab the street chemists in the street lab. PKs, I swing for days, got to tech the sprays. On any brother that plays, get hit off and I'm sways. It's an adventure to quench my thirst, but still I'm worse. You end up in the hearse trying to finish up first. You get split. My whip hit quick like a round kick or a tight slack that hitch on a real fat trick. My style switch. Your block get chopped because I got it locked. Pay a couple cops so they don't knock my rocks. So I hustle, ride, steal, and loot. And then a freeze right there. All these pigs do is shoot. Ayo, they got me. Lock me up. Good, good, good mug. Now I'm just a grain of dust in these. Three hills I've show. got to find a getaway. I've got to find a better place. All that's in my mind. <laughs> <Three hills show. laughs> I've got to find that's what you do when commercials is on. <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back. This is Mad Mondays. I'm your host, White Out, a.k.a. Two Man. Y'all already know what it is. And when I bring people, I bring the hottest of the hot um, in everything that they doing, like whatever they doing. Um, if you familiar with the song that just came on, um, that was a throwback one time from uh, Mr. Eel featuring my first guest for the day. Um, You've seen her on here before. She had her hair. You had the big hair last time yeah. you was on here and shit. We played your music and shit. Uh, but you brought uh, your, I ain't going to say your better half, but your other half. Yes. Um, all the way from Oakland, California, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Miss Stacy Hogg Stewart and Mr. LaBelle Stewart. Thank y'all for coming. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. So, uh. No, because he said he said he wasn't home yet. He wasn't, so, but I'm saying I came on your show this year. That was this year. Was it? Yes. Well, we've been on a year though. I thought I had you like in the first, the oh, first, the first okay. group. Okay. But I don't know. Was that season one, season two? But it, was it this year? I don't yeah. know. Well, fuck I it. You, you back. <laughs> Everything happened so fast right. in my fast. life. It was yeah. like fast, like light. Yeah, you most know, definitely. I just walked yeah. into wow. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, we're going to have you speak on t- speaking a little closer to the mic. Oh, okay. if, I, if you want me to pull it out for you. Or, yeah, pull yeah, it out for you me. Go. You know, I'm a shorty. Right, right, right. So um, welcome, welcome. Uh, for the people that don't know who you are, uh, y'all can uh, introduce yourselves and let them know a little something, something about yourselves. Well, my name is Stacy Hogg Stewart. Like you said, I'm a singer, songwriter, and entrepreneur from the Bay. I have a breast cancer called the Sharon Randolph Foundation, and uh, I basically... 
am a hair care expert. So what I do through the Sharon Randolph Foundation, I basically give non-surgical hair replacement to women going through cancer um, in memory of my mother. Right. So I, I think I talked about that last yeah. time that I was here. But mm -hmm. since um, I have become a wife. Congratulations. And I am so happy. <laughs> like, I am Salute so happy. To that. When the Bible says a man shall find a wife, that is so, so true. Amen. And when he also says that we are favored by him for it, it is also true. Amen. So I'd like to introduce my husband, Lavelle. And you can expound. <laughs> the right way. <laughs> What's going on, brother? And wifey, love you. Uh, my name is Lavelle Stewart. I'm one half of the Stewarts. Um, you can catch us on Unstoppable Stewards. Um, check your uh, local platforms. Um, but my name is Lavelle Stewart, as I said, and what I do is I advocate. I advocate for nonviolence throughout the city of Oakland. I was currently out here self-destructing these streets when I was younger. I have been home as of right now nine months. I recently was incarcerated for 28 years, so I'm well familiar with what's going on in these streets. And we out here right now with um, advocating for this nonviolence and, and really, you know, getting some momentum behind this movement and trying to help these babies, w you know, go through the storms that they're going through and uh, figure out a different solution other than picking up a pistol and blowing somebody's head off. Yes, sir. Because um, the back part of that, that situation is the dark side of what prison is. A lot of these people don't understand. They watch these videos and they get that 1% of what prison is from these rappers who glorify that place. And I always tell people like, you know, our ancestors came from the coast of Africa. Would, would we ever hear them glorifying being on a boat chained? Right. And, and yeah, man, I, I was able to push that whole motherfucking boat across the, <laughs> right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, like, they ain't going to be doing nothing like that. I was so. picking the shit out that cotton, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, right. you know what I'm saying? Getting yeah. chains with cotton. Right, right. 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 with some cotton. Right. Right. Some, some, some real nigga <laughs> shit. That's <laughs> couldn't break me, hit me 12 times, right. boy. I, you know what I mean? That, that kind of ignorance, and it's like, no disrespect to them rappers. They're getting paid, but at, at some point, it has to be a message. And what you said about the young brother, Stalin, about yeah. finally coming to that situation where he needed to, like, express, hey, there's some positivity in this. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's that's a sign of maturity. Right. Because that's what I had to go through at 23 years old when I was ignorant running around in Oakland doing all this weird stuff, you know what I'm saying, and then having to spend 28 years in prison. Damn. So when I came home, I advocated through a nonprofit called Guide Rise, which is giving – youth direction everywhere, helping these babies out here. And what's alarming to me is I recently worked in the Richmond School District where the same verbiage that I was hearing for me to be released out of prison with the psychiatrists that were in prison were using the same verbiage with kindergartners and sixth graders. So, mm. And that's what, that's what has inspired us mm. to do our um, nonprofit because we were those kids whose parents um, did not have the education and didn't have the wherewithal on what their rights was right. for us as children because most of us have ADHD, right? Yeah. Right. And so some kind of mental health something. Yes. Yeah. Both my husband and I like were those kids in school. Mm -hmm. And so our why for this is that there's no help for them. And if we start at an elementary school age, we can reach our children and get them the help that they need. Right, absolutely. Which is why we, we are, our pr one of our programs, which is our parental advocate program, okay. we've already started. That's where we were working in the schools in Richmond, okay. um, as he was saying. So we saw firsthand what the needs of the kids were, pretty much. I, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a cold, systematic situation that's jumping off and you think about like they when we was younger right like how we grew up our mothers our grandmothers would when we would fall down on the ground and our fathers would tell us boy you know what i'm saying get up don't show no type of emotion right. so you think like you know over the course of time that shit starts to build on you so right. you become that person who does not show that type of emotion whereas little girls when they would fall down it would be, oh, what's going on with your knee, baby, or your elbow? Right. And they get all this different type of attention yeah. because we weren't looked at like that. So then now fast forward to come all the way back to where we at in 
in 2023 and all these suicides is taking mm-hmm. place. These babies is calling out for help, yeah. mm-hmm. but they don't know where to go to go get it. Right. Right? So that's where we come in. That's where we say, you know what I'm saying? Enough is enough. Fuck all that pride. Right. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck's going on with you? What's wrong with you? Right. Why are you going through what you're going through? It's all right to cry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You a man, it's all right to show this emotion because right. they're walking around with all that shit bottled up. Right. And then they be wondering why these young youngsters be out here in these streets doing what they doing because they ain't never been able to express that to nobody. That's right. right. They feeling like don't nobody want to listen to right. them. So coming from that environment and knowing this environment, I'm approaching the situation head on. I just did a walk for peace in Berkeley with Big Zoe and all of them and Blue and all them brothers that come out here and do security for various events that we have in the city of Oakland mm-hmm. and just was really trying to push that initiative like enough is enough. Right. You know, all these cars getting broken into, all this lawlessness going on. I heard Fab talking about elderly people being disrespected. Yes. That was unheard of, but right. sadly it is what it is. Yeah. And the reason why I'm so passionate about it is because I take full responsibility for the ignorance. You know what I'm saying? My my big homie, Lil D. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We we celebrate him coming home, mm-hmm. but we know why he was in prison. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And it's no disrespect to the homie. Right. But what we were out here doing and what how we was moving is a ripple effect of what's taking place all those years later. And that's why Oakland is in the state that it's in right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. a ripple effect is a cold thing because you figure this water bottle right here, right? Mm-hmm. You put it in a glass and you drop one little piece of whatever you drop in there, mm-hmm. them waves is going to go like this. Right. So for generations, our communities have been fucked over mm-hmm. by crack cocaine. Yeah. And that's crazy, though, because, like, I, I went through my time of selling drugs and shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, <clears throat> like you just said, like, as I got older and, you know, I'll be looking at the streets and seeing the homeless people and shit, and I'm just like, you know, I feel bad because I'm like, I'm the reason some of this shit is happening. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I love doing what I do now because it's like I'm in the streets really helping the people. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because it's just like fucked up. And one of my coworkers was like, uh, what happened? And I was like, shit, I told her, crack. Like, <laughs> they put that shit out here and yeah. motherfuckers start smoking that shit and yeah. losing homes yeah. and, and, and family members and dying over this shit. Yeah. And it's just like. That's what happened. You yeah, know what I'm saying? The sad thing was the way that it was set up. Right. For the youngsters that was that was moving that shit, they wasn't giving us no way to go do nothing else different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was it was like it was a situation where you had to move it. So individuals, some individuals got lucky and got money. Mm-hmm. Other individuals, sadly, you know what I'm saying, as they families reap the bene- the the effects of being addicted, they reap the benefit of excuse me, not benefits, but they reap the repercussions of going back and forth to those prisons. Right. And that's how our whole community just literally dispersed. It's like now, I remember coming up prior to all that shit happening the way that it happened, Mm -hmm. living right there on 82nd and Birch Mm -hmm. as a kid, and we knew where the drug house was. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it wasn't no screeching tires. It wasn't no loud music being played. It wasn't nobody hanging out. (laughs) It wasn't none of that shit. But you knew exactly what was going on in that house. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But the minute all of that shit hit the corner, and it was available to anybody to try to move it, mm-hmm. it became reckless. Yeah. It became completely reckless. And from, I want to say, 83 to, to after I left, I left in 94, so at least to the 2000s, like, you know, certain people came in different eras. 8-4 was hot. Mm-hmm. They was doing their thing. The murders was hot. Mm-hmm. You know, you had mm-hmm. different spots sprouting up and just was moving right. shit crazy and then right. boom it'll be another spot because all of them would be then went to the right bed, <laughs> and, and it was just like niggas was taking turns like it's my turn until we go to jail right <laughs> that that yeah. kind of shit but it's like you just think about all the people that suffered mm-hmm. the and now you got these young brothers that's and grew up fatherless because their daddy's been locked up like right. me yeah. i left three boys out here mm-hmm. i'm just blessed that they had strong enough women around them to allow them to, you know what I'm saying, become men and 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 not be succumb to what's going on out here in these streets right, right now. Right. Because this is an epidemic, and yeah. it's like we we ain't going nowhere fast if we just don't sit back and yeah. just watch it happen. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's a solution to every problem, you know. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people are like, um, "What's wrong with the kids? What's wrong with the kids?" Actually, it's the parents. Yeah. We gotta start supporting these parents. Yeah. If not, we're just gonna continue to spiral right. down. And um, this is why this program is so 
near and dear to both of us because we get a chance to help these kids on an elementary school level. And what we both realize, all of us, don't you remember your elementary school teachers? Yeah. <laughs> you remember all your elementary school I hate that school bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Rather you I had a cool one, though, but yeah, 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 yeah. I had yeah, cool yeah. ones. I be thinking about them, too, like, but yeah. I know most of them probably gone They now. probably gone, yeah. but that's the, the impression that Lavelle and I want to have on these kids, and we do. Some of the kids that we worked with, this last school year, they call us still during the summer. That's like, not even the parents. Yeah. It's the kids the that's calling right. us. Yeah. Right. But that's when you realize the type of impact that you made on somebody. Oh, yeah, for sure. You yes. know what I mean? For so, sure. so it's like some. it might be some women right now watching this podcast who got kids, mm -hmm. who don't know that they got particular rights yes. within the public school system that they could actually utilize to their benefit opposed to their kid constantly getting, getting suspended. suspended over and over again yes. or sent to a, a detention center within the school that ain't teaching them nothing but just to sit there until the day is over. You right. know what yes. I mean? Because right. that's what's going on. And it's like yes. they just ain't paying attention. And, and while we were there for the couple of months that we was there, we was not allowing none of them teachers to throw no black kids away. See, that's, that's the, the other thing that we stand for. We stand for our children. Hello. We do know that everybody needs help, yes. but our we kids, help ourselves we first. have to help ourselves. Yes, and on. we don't want anyone to think that we're like, oh, you know, we don't want to help anyone else. Our focus is our black kids right now because our community is hurting. So what that looks like, Lavelle and I, <coughs> we go to the kids' class. And we sit there with the kid. We basically um, connect them to, like I said, 504 plans, which is the behavioral plan. If your child is out there getting suspended, you need to contact us. We need to help you help your child. Because oh, wow. black boys and girls are the highest suspended in every school district. It's not just Oakland, Richmond, Bay Area. This is a nationwide problem. Right. And the problem is these parents are not educated on IEPs, the IEPs is um, helping kids with their cognitive skills. You know, okay. all kids don't have the same cognitive right. skills. So this protects the kid and it protects the parent. Okay. And so this is why this program is near and dear to us. This is our first program. Sweetheart, you want to tell them about our other upcoming programs? They're not moving That's right a caller? Now, oh, we got a caller. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We got a caller. Okay. <laughs> yeah, call in, y'all. <laughs> Please. What it do? This Mad Mondays was handy. Who is this? Who you want to speak to? I don't know. Somebody called my phone, and I'm trying to figure out who number this is. Okay, this is a radio <laughs> station right now, sweetheart. You, you're live on my podcast. I uh, I don't think nobody called you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I love it. Who is this? You know what? Oh, that's Smoke what, hella cigarettes. Like, who is this? No, that's some, that's some only in Oakland shit right there. Right. You know and I'm like, nigga, nobody even use that phone. How the fuck somebody call you? <laughs> Is you talking about? How do you call someone's phone and say, "Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> Make sure your throat first before you start talking and shit." I'm definitely right. quitting smoking. Right, Arbor Day. Oh definitely Arbor Day. <laughs> Y'all remember that commercial? Yeah. <laughs> I play too much. <laughs> too fucking much. Oh but um, God. all right. So what was we? Oh, oh, you said y'all wanted to go to the uh, the other thing. What's you, that? Um, you said. Oh, the, the stewards. The stewards. The stewards. Oh, yes, okay, yes, so yes. Look. The stewards is 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 basically doing exactly what you doing, right? Uh huh. It, but under the merit relationship aspect of how we gonna be dealing with some things, so okay. we'll be talking to different people about relationships issues from a man and woman's point of view. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. And that's a, that's the podcast. Yes. Yes. We're, yes. When uh, we're the, we're just gonna stream on. Um, we that's what we're trying to debate on round. Oh, okay. Where we gonna stream? Should so maybe y'all can give us a little help here. with that shit, y'all. We got a date, a uh, little bit, cause what? I think that'll be dope to have that motherfucker here, though. Know? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just the concept of the marriage yes, thing. That'll exactly. be dope. Absolutely. No, yeah, that would be dope. Yeah, we can network, the, make that yeah. shit happen. Let's sure. make it happen, cause we actually have the stuff at our at a, at a studio. But I'm like, look, the the it it takes teamwork to make the dream Facts. work. Yeah. and I totally believe in that. So Absolutely. let's definitely talk before the night is over. But. We are also going to be talking about our relationship. Our, that's why we're the unstoppable stewards, okay? Right. Because our love and our connection didn't just happen overnight. Even I, was, though, I was getting to that. Like, how long y'all been there? Even that? though, yeah. So he, A lot of people yeah. don't know, like, we met in 92. I was like her weed man. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Ain't nothing so, wrong with that. TMI. It's better, it's better than crack. <laughs> Absolutely. You know. So, <laughs> so, so then when I went to jail, you know, we reconnected and, and always been. Don't you know, tell them too much because they got to tune into the podcast. Much, but, you, know, <laughs> yeah. she, you know, she was a real one. You know, I mean, like I, I tell people all the time because you get a lot of folks be on there talking about. Girl, you better not touch nobody and do nothing while I'm up in that penitentiary. Motherfucker, you put yourself in the penitentiary. And at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For that real. pussy still get hot as cayenne pepper, and right. she got to go soothe that motherfucker. <laughs> I can't stand here right so now. you want to sit here and play like that's not a reality? It really is. And at the end of the day, these grown women got to go live their life. And when they go live their life, they have happy lives. And sometimes they do things that, you know, in your mind, you would not want them to do. But they got to do what they do. Have a nigga in jail. Dressing like a motherfucker. You know, I came home at 52 years old. I ain't got too many grades. You know why? He was in a time capsule. I wasn't. I wasn't. Shit. That was one stress I wasn't going to have is worried about what a woman is out here on these streets doing. So, bro, I, I want to ask a question. Um, we're going to go back to the, uh, the, the podcast thing, though. But, like, you said you did 25, 28 years. Right. And that's a long motherfucking time. You that's said 1994, so I graduated that year. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is going on 30 years that I'm going to be out of school. So that's a long motherfucking time. During right. that time, yes. like, what were you doing to get your keep mind, his mind yeah, straight? Keep your mind straight. I'm going to tell you on some real stuff, right? A lot of people go to jail. And when they sit in there, they sit in there in, in a state of denial. They want to they wanna point the finger at their mama for not raising them right. They want to put their finger at the conditions of the neighborhood for it not being right. And, you know, we tend to want to point fingers and, and accuse everybody else right. for, for what you did. What you didn't do. Right. So I had to take full responsibility and accountability for who I was, why I was the way that I was. And why the fuck I was actually in prison in the first place? Mm. I knew it wasn't going to be no smooth road because prison is not designed for you to be there where you're comfortable. Chilling, right. So you're going you gonna to have your ups and downs. You're going to have your moments. You're going to go through all that shit. My, my aha moment, as Oprah likes to call you <laughs> Your know, turning like, point. <laughs> aha moment. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I got stabbed in my motherfucking back 14 times in a riot in Solano State Prison fuck. in 2015. Damn. Collapsed my motherfucking lung, had me uh, up out that motherfucker for five days in a real hospital bed, you know what I'm saying? Hooked up to a motherfucking uh, machine, you know what I'm saying? Extracting all that, that fluid that had got in my lung. And so it was at that moment that I was like, I don't want to die in this motherfucker. Right. And I probably had been in there at that time like 22, 23 yeah, years. Little, yeah. You know what I'm so saying? Still hadn't learned his lesson. Right. I mean, because at... At so long, that place became where I was at. Right. So the streets, what I was out here doing on the streets, mm -hmm. I was doing that up in there too. Right. And it was just at a smaller level, but it still was, motherfuckers still getting high, still buying right. dope, <laughs> right. all that. It, it, it just yeah. don't stop. It's just a right. smaller environment, right. <laughs> and that's it. And when yeah. your ass get out of pocket, somebody going to deal with you just right. like they do out here on these streets. Right. Simple as that. But then as time went on, and like I said, when that happened to me, it just it just changed in a, in a riot. It wasn't nothing that I did wrong. Right, I right. Out, it just, I went out of pocket. It was yeah, just my, my yeah, color skin. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it happened. So then I just changed my whole, like, way of thinking, man. Mm -hmm. I, I had to. So I went into uh, what a nonprofit that a lot of people are probably familiar with called Delancey Street. They right mm -hmm. there on um, 600 and Barcadero, yes, right? Sir. Shout out to D Street. They was the people that really changed my life. It was a lady by the name of um, Mimi Silver, the head woman who run uh, Delancey Street. Her and then Governor Brown was hella cool. Mm -hmm. So they teamed up, and Governor Brown wanted her, you know, way of, of thinking and philosophy to be implemented in one of the buildings in Solano State Prison. Okay. So she basically moved everybody out and had started it a year prior to this incident happening to me. So when it happened, you know, they came and got at me and was like, look, man, would you mind coming over here? You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I don't really know. So <laughs> I just filled out a, a, a little, you know, um, slip to be interviewed by the people because that's how Delancey do. They, right. they interview you before you go in the program. And I left it alone and didn't think no more about it. 
So when I came back after the riot, we was locked down for like about 90 days behind that shit. So in the midst of the 90 days, I give what's called a ducat to go over to talk to the people that's running Delancey Street. They like, man, look, we heard about your situation, you know, but is you willing to come in the program? I'm like, well, shit, fuck it, you know? Right. I ain't got nothing to lose. Right. So I, I go up in there. So all the, like, little prison politics that was going on where I was, like, you sit over here because you black, you over here because you're Mexican, you over here because you white, you shower over here because of your race, and, and you kick it in a particular area because, you know what I'm saying, that's how it's moving up right. in there. So this woman was like, we ain't doing none of that shit in this building. If you're going to be in this building, you're going to buy by the rules that we put in place. So being that a motherfucker been fucking up my whole life, I'm right. like, let me see if this shit will really work. Right. Let, let me try, right. this. Let let me, me try this shit. Let me throw some paint on the wall. Right. <laughs> and, and just slowly but surely, I just got up out of that whole way of thinking, like mm -hmm. really understanding why I was in the penitentiary. All the people I had affected, from my mama on down, you know what I'm saying, to my kids, to my woman, to everybody, all of the, the, the people on the other side of the fence, the, the victim's family, right. having empathy and sympathy for them because I ran through that motherfucker with this false belief system that, yeah, I handled my business, mm -hmm. but really I didn't handle my business. You know what I'm saying? There was another black man dead, and here I was in prison Gone. for the rest of my life. Right. Two lives you know wasted. Yeah. So on some bullshit, though, some shit that could have been squashed, right. and we could have kept moving, but being up in that, in that, in that weird mind state and about – pride and a lot of these babies out here is on some prideful shit. You right. can't talk to me a certain way. Right. You can't look at me a certain right. way. Nigga, if you step on my shoe, it's on. Yeah. That kind of shit. That's the that's that mental psychosis that we get caught up in, you know, that false pride. Like, yeah, you can't tell me shit because of whatever, or I can't tell you nothing because of where I'm from. Right. And, and, you know, all these barriers we put instead of just listening to a motherfucker that's trying to give you some real game to keep you from getting your motherfucking face blue off. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because that's what they doing out here. Like, yeah. you want to be one of them people? Right. All right, Billy Badass. Because mm -hmm. all the niggas I know that was tough when I was out here, ain't none of them niggas out here no more. Mm. None of them. You hear about them. Right. Oh, you know what I'm saying? In past tense about what a motherfucker used to do and all of that. Because right. that's all you're going to end up being is what a motherfucker used to do. Right. Fuck that. Fuck What's going that. on with right now? Yeah. Let's build right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm on some Oakland build back shit. I love yeah, that like, shit. Like, the shit that we was doing the other night, you know what I'm saying, with the comedy show, the shit that mm -hmm. we was doing in the park out there on 9-8, mm -hmm. that's that build back, you know right. what I'm saying? Because that's what this is about. Yeah. This, Oakland is rich in tradition. Right. Yes. I come from that tradition. Mm -hmm. I know what that tradition is like mm -hmm. from, from a good side and a negative side. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving and shaking with a whole bunch of people out here that got love for me because you know why? I always kept it south. Hello. That's the key. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> you tell these youngsters, because we ain't going to save them all. Right. But one thing you better not never do is don't run your motherfucking mouth. Right. Straight so that up. when you do come home, you can have some sense of dignity and respect about yourself. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You better listen. Yeah. You ain't lying. <laughs> we talking from experience. Right, right, right. And that's, 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 that's important. Yeah. Like, like, like. Like, what you doing, what y'all doing, I love it. Like, I totally get it. But I think that the children or the youth are going to listen to you because you actually went through the shit yep. right. instead of a motherfucker learning a it from a that book. that got a degree. You know exactly. what I'm saying? That shit, I, I, I rather listen to somebody that actually been Absolutely. In, yeah. in, in, in some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Instead of, and I, I learned that late. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what they, they they want you to, oh, well, he knows everything because yeah. he, he has a master's degree yeah, in this no. shit. Man, that shit don't mean no. nothing. How the fuck an uh, 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 alcoholic counselor going to teach you, uh, you sobriety right. if you ain't never drunk? No, if you yeah. ain't never been an alcoholic. Absolutely. Like, what the fuck part of the game is this, nigga? You don't know what it's like to trigger, uh, right. my trigger set off and hands shaking in yeah. the morning. None of that shit. Y'all right. don't know that shit. Absolutely. So I can't, they was trying to have me go to uh, AA classes and shit. I'm like, no, I just... Fuck around and talk. Well, the AA classes are different because them motherfuckers in there really was like, yeah, you know up. what I'm saying? But I, I, I meant to say I fuck with the AA before I fuck with um, somebody I got to pay yeah, to try to yeah. help. Yeah, I get you know yeah, what I'm saying? Because them it. motherfuckers in there, they tell their stories and you be like, shit. Yeah, you be like, I ain't got no problem. I've been, <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been. Motherfucker be like, well, shit, that ain't me. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> life lessons is the best lesson. Facts. Yeah. That's like, like when I came home and, and, 
Lil Partner, Lil D, he mm. pulled up on me and he told me, he said, man, don't nobody out here owe you shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? It mm. ain't the same no more. So don't run around here thinking don't nobody owe you shit. Right. And I took that to heart. So I was like, okay, I got to come out here and learn this lingo, this new lingo that we out here doing, mm -hmm. sitting up right now doing podcasts mm -hmm. and things like that. That was unheard of when I left the street. Right. But it's a beautiful thing because the message can be conveyed to these young people. Facts. That listen, bro, I done been out here where you at. Yeah. And if you don't watch yourself, you headed to where I just left. Right. But see, the whole thing is like, I don't know, it's fucked up because it's like the you, I mean, you could tell a motherfucker, right? And you can show a motherfucker, right? But it's just like they mindset is already fucked up. Yeah. Uh, off of these drugs and all yeah. this other shit. They don't even give a fuck. Yeah. Yes, and that's why like, we're reaching out to the babies. It's like sad. we we got to, it's a generation that's lost. It's true. It yeah. is a generation that's lost. Yes. But I feel like us working with kids, K, um, kindergarten through, through, through 12, you know, kindergarten through sixth grade, yes. at yeah. that impressionable age. Right. Right. I think that we'll be able to reach, oh, reach for that. Sure. Yeah. And so for not sure. only the kids, but the parents, too, will we'll, we'll begin to see a change in our community once these parents become educated on their rights. Because like my husband was saying, the public school district is not made for our children. It no. was made for us to fail. It's set up for failure. Yeah. So because it's set up for failure, you have to be that parent who is an advocate for your child. And a lot of these parents are not advocates for their child. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing because no, I'm somebody who needed a 504 plan, yeah. period. Right. Yeah. I yeah. was suspended from Skyline every other week. For not five. you. Yes, me. <laughs> for real? They didn't have most suspended, but I was class clown and class cutter, okay? <laughs> Off the hook, okay? Walking the halls. Things that I see these kids doing now, right. I was doing. Yeah. Right. And so it's so funny. We both come home like, do you know what this kid did? It reminded me of myself. Absolutely. So it's like I want to help. My why is because I was one of these kids. Mm -hmm. And I want to educate these parents because we can't say they don't have them on 504 or IEP plans because they just being lazy. Right. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't have the resources. Exactly. Another thing that we do at Guide Ride, um, kids who have seen murders mm -hmm. um, and are expected to go to school and perform like everybody else, right. we get extra counseling from the city for these kids. Okay. Yeah, because they they have up. major trauma. Oh, yeah, for sure. But if you, there's no advocacy for them, they're getting suspended every week from school. They're sitting in the office. We know this is what they do to kids. So. And the sad part is that, you know, nobody has really ever told them how to articulate that pain. Yeah. Right. So they sit there and they numb. And right. You constantly, what's going on with you? Why are you doing all of this? And they mm -hmm. can't get that shit out. We build relationships with the parents and they convey this stuff to us. One of the parents conveyed the news that her son had been a part of a, a murder and the school didn't even know. Wow. I had to go to the school and report it. Yeah, wow. Big. Yeah. So he was still going to school? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. he was on our list. He was on our list because he had behavioral problems. And right. I built such a rapport with the mom that one day she told me, she was like, my son was in the car in Oakland with, with my best friend. She got her head shot off. Damn. And my son was in the car. And the principal of the school did not know. So I had to report it to the, to the principal. And then I went to victim of crimes in Oakland and started the application process with the parent. I sat with her and filled out that seven page application process so that her son can get the the therapy that he needs during the summer right see they yeah. have um, um, psychiatrists and therapists set up at school but they're not equipped to deal with kids who saw somebody get their head right yeah that's what i'm saying they're they going back to the book like man y'all need to start hiring that, motherfuckers that been through this shit yes. and seen it yes fuck the background yes like these people can actually make a change y'all yes. not doing nothing no Y'all just getting a paycheck. Y'all don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's the sad part. Right? Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's like, it's maybe a handful of teachers that, that you know what I'm saying, that might be really doing what they're supposed right. to be doing. And Not then, many. And then it's another, you know. And it's, it's sad, man. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's real. Yeah, that shit it's is real, real fucked up. It, 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 is it just y'all two or y'all got a team? 
We a team until Just, we build. Oh <laughs> shit! Add me to the list whenever y'all ready. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm He's at one show. school. I'm at one school. Right. Hopefully this school semester we will both be at two different schools as well. Right. But this is how God grows business. Mm -hmm. You know, He starts with us. We are the foundation. And eventually, we will need people that we can train to come into hell these yeah, schools with us. Motherfuckers will start going to hella schools. Yes. Once you get a yes. team, a big ass yes. team, it'd be yes. somebody in hella school. So our, I, our ideal team will be um, um, a group of black and browns, because even though we are focused on our African American kids, our brown kids are suffering yeah. so, so yeah. much. I'm like, saying, <laughs> yeah, but no, for real. I, I yeah. just, I'd be thinking like, like I'd be. Driving down the street and shit, and I see more Mexicans yeah. driving crazy and yeah. doing hella oh, shit on East yeah. 14 yeah. than yeah. anybody else. Yeah, yeah. it's you know a lot going These on. walking around with the mask on. Yeah. It's hot right. than a motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Any nigga that's still wearing a mask that's covering <laughs> your whole face like a Taliban, you up to that no shit good. make me nervous. Don't you know no good? <laughs> I watch that boy. Right. Like, for real. I know. Gotta for keep real. your eyes on that nigga. It's too like, hot. It's too hot. Why you masked up? <laughs> right. To the eyes. Man, for real. Yeah. So we have to help our brown community too. So we will be looking for people of our African com American community and brown community as well to help us reach these kids because they don't have anyone at school that looks like them. Right. The principal is white. The right. counselor is white. The right. therapist is white. Right. So who looks like them that can relate to them? And this is why our kids that we worked with last year still love us to this day in we, summertime. We got a caller. Another one. Okay. Well, what it do? It's Mad Mondays. Who this? Man, man, it's DJ, man. What's happening, White? DJ, what's good with you, brother? How you doing? Hey, man, I just had to call and tap in, man, let you know, man. Them two guests you got on there, the husband and wife, man, they doing great things out here in Oakland, and the streets need that, man. I want to tell bro, welcome home, and uh, it's time to get back busy, man, because you could be the vessel to, to get to get all this shit in order, man, because, you know, these streets is fucked up right now. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to call and give y'all a shout-out, man. I will tap in up there, but, nigga, I'm at the job piece, man, but I'm tuning get in from money, a distance. Get your money, man. Get your money. Hey. You know, why I, I definitely appreciate the white too. You know, I, I appreciate you, brother. For real, I'm uh, I'm gonna hit you uh after the podcast though, because I see you called me the other day and I didn't tap in. Though. I was just about to say, next time I call you, you don't answer your phone. <laughs> I'm gonna come knocking at your door. <laughs> it's all. Y'all have a brother. good show, man. Shout out Bay Life Radio, Igor. What it do? Igor. What it do? Already. Talk to y'all in a minute. In a minute. Absolutely. Thank yep. you. Yeah, like you said, uh, you know, you I mean, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be able to get to everybody. No, no, but, you, it's, but them ones you get yeah. to, that shit, shit, yeah. that shit, yeah, it, 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 actually, it, it actually uh, multiplied because the motherfucker that you get right can tell his friends. That's I'm right. I'm going to tell you, like, real hustlers, right? I know when we was, when we was coming, to, coming up, the hustlers that was out there used to be telling some of us, you know, go to school, man. Don't yeah. be out here yeah. on the street. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and that really needs to take place. Yeah. That I'm, because it ain't just, like you said, some cats is going to be out here. They're going to be out here, and it's no disrespect to that life because I don't turn my nose up to it because I know that life very well. Right. And Lord willing, you know, as time goes on, they'll find their space where they like, fuck it, I want to do something different with my life too. Mm -hmm. But we need them too because yeah. they are the they are the influence. Right. The future. So, so when a youngster look, look up to them, just remember, you out here doing whatever you're doing, but you're going to need a lawyer to defend you when you get Hello. arrested. Yeah. You're going to need a doctor to sew you up if you get hurt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to need these people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You might need somebody if you're trying to buy a house. You might need a real yeah. estate. If, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? Somebody mm -hmm. can go in there and negotiate a deal for you to buy your house. Facts. You might need all these different people that work in these different places so everybody can't be out there. It's like a chessboard. A pawn can only do so much. Right. A rook and a knight can only do so much. Facts. They can't do no more than what they're supposed to do. <laughs> right. So allow some of these youngsters to do what they're supposed to do to yeah. keep this thing moving. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like you said, it's going to be some of them, they're going to fall by the wayside. Right. But they will be the next influencers for the other youngsters that's going to idolize them because they in the hood doing whatever right. they're doing. Right. That's what I respect about my big homie. He came home and said, despite my, my, my past, this is what I'm out here doing. Yeah. And a lot of kids gravitated to that. And when I saw that, I was like, you know what? That's some shit I want to do when I get home. Yeah, because I remember uh, the first time I met you was at the uh, the uh, the women's uh, uh, empowerment branch. Yeah, the empowerment branch. The Sharon Randolph and, Foundation. And you was you was positive then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You was on yeah. your shit then. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I was just like, that was a beautiful thing, especially finding out how long you were incarcerated. Right. And then to come out and do something positive, I'm just like, 
it should be a lot of more brothers like you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some of them niggas getting out and going back to the same shit. That's it, only that's only because an individual didn't do the work. Right. Because yes. I mean, a, a cat can't just wake up and those magic wands and just miraculously, <laughs> you right. know, and all of a sudden you just better. Right. No, nah, yeah. it's just like how you was talking about the addiction. The mm-hmm. addiction is always there. Mm-hmm. It, I control my anger different now than I did when I was younger. Right. I know how to necessarily deal with it opposed to just being out here on some irrational thinking right. and, and reactionary behavior. You right. know what I'm saying? Sweetheart, can I add to what you said? So... He actually was incarcerated, and he did the work on himself, obviously, right? You see what we're looking at. Right. There are people who have been on the streets, and for 28 years, they're still stagnated, right. not moving, still the same people they were back in back the day. Back then. I know a nigga like that Swear right now. I'm like, bro, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> nigga, this nigga's still stuck in 1994. No, it is people <laughs> out there that is major <laughs> stuck. Let's talk about that it. That shit is wow. sad, Let's though. talk about it. Someone in, someone's just like, you know... What have you gone through with him um, being, in, you know, um, as far as institutionaliz- institutionalization? I said, the only thing I've had to deal with him is not putting the seat down. And how many niggas out here still don't put the seat down and they ain't been nowhere? That's fucked up. Let's talk about it, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, like, what do you think I'm going through? Like, he did the work on himself. It, yeah. it shows. Yes. Yes. It shows. It's proven. And so... That's the part that I would like to acknowledge. Thank you. That you did the work. Yeah. Had to. Salute that, brother. You did the work. Salute you that. You did the work. So um, I seen something else on y'all uh, on one of y'all pages. Uh, y'all was working out together. Oh yes. yeah. yeah, so yeah, can, yeah we, can we yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, that? Because yeah, yeah. it made me want to get up and do some <laughs> shit. Especially the so ones with the legs and shit. I'm like, oh, okay, I need to do that shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So really and truly, it's a trip. It's a deeper meaning to us working out together. You want to explain it, baby? I mean, it's, it's, it's a mind, body, and soul thing. It's, okay. it's like getting in tune with your other self. Right. And this woman being a reflection of me, it's just, okay, be in sync with me one time while we do these burpees and while we do these squats and these leg lifts. And you know what I'm saying? As you feeling pain, I'm feeling pain. And then it's a mental thing like to drive you past that pain and just do it because you see me in front of you and vice versa. Right. And how long can you withstand that pressure? Okay. You know what I'm saying? See, that could be that could be a YouTube channel too. Absolutely. Yeah. The podcast yep. just strictly on working out and shit. Yeah. Y'all got a lot of shit going on. We man. do, man. That's why I love you. We got man. products coming out. I have my unstoppable hair products oh, yeah. coming out. We're Talk probably selling. It. So I am third generation hairstylist. I am what you call a hair care expert. I've been doing hair li- licensed since I was 21 years old, but doing hair long, long before I was licensed in my grandmother's salon. Uh, when I was younger, I used to see my grandmother make grease for her customers. No and shit. she used to make it, yes, in the garage of, of the, where the hair salon is. What kind of grease? The like your hair hand? grease, oh, yeah. For real? She used to jar, put it in baby jars and sell that grease to her clients. Oh, my what's, God. What's that lady that uh, they had the movie about it? That, uh, 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 Madam C.J. Walker. Yeah, yeah. My so, grandmother so actually she... donated to that college every year before she passed. Is that yes. right? Oh, That's what's up. And so um, I was inspired by my grandmother to create products. So... Not only am I a hair care expert, but I educate people on products. So okay. you have these products that are on the shelf, and they say moisturizing this and right. moisturizing <laughs> that, right? <laughs> and then you pick up the bottle and read the ingredients, and the first ingredient on it is alcohol, wow. right? Okay. No, no. No? No. Okay. Horrible for someone's hair who has a relaxer, uh-huh. and definitely horrible on our hair yeah. naturally, right. right? So I was inspired to do this so that I can educate people on what type of products to use so my products don't have alcohol in them okay alcohol or oil in them it has like real natural like botanical oils so you make this shit yourself i got with a formulator in los angeles her name is jerry shout out to jerry my formulator hey jerry with me (laughs) oh my god jerry i love you so that's out now we are working on working the marketing. On yeah, we're okay. working on the marketing and packaging right so now. We're gonna have to have you back for that. Yes, yes, yes. yes Put something yes. somebody here and shit. Some, some, somebody here that got. Oh, I got videos. What's, what's nappy hair? Because y'all, it, it's not called nappy. Is that I coarse? call it good hair. Good yes. hair. Coarse hair is coarse. good hair. <laughs> yes, because coarse hair, <laughs> right. coarse hair is good hair. Come on. And the reason why it's good hair is because it can twist easy, it press out easy. It, it, it's like the best hair to me. We call it nappy. You see how how society right, 
that fucked has, us up, right? Yes, that's the best hair, and they talking about nappy. It is nappy. the best hair ever. Do you wow. hear me? Um, <laughs> what, what they call good hair to me is average hair because that hair is wavy. Sometimes it's fine. Mm -hmm. It doesn't style well. Sometimes you mm -hmm. know. Um, depending on if it's natural or not, it goes back to natural in two days, you know? Wow. So, same thing with the good hair. But <laughs> right. the good hair, if it goes back to natural, you can braid it. Okay. Or twist it. And it looks good. So, you got something that can make me grow hair? I do. <laughs> I'm a non-surgical hair replacement specialist, baby. Yeah. Tell him. Yeah. Yes. Real. I used to work for the hair club for hey, men. Hey, I, I can have you looking like Prince, 1999. <laughs> oh, that's part down the middle. Look, look. Y'all already know what I do. Y'all need to come see. Hey. Y'all need to go to my page on I Facebook. Igor said it is, he need a patch. <laughs> Igor, XO Hair Alternatives on Facebook and social media. I mean, and uh, Instagram. Instagram is XO underscore Hair Alternatives. Okay, that's my business page. Yes. Okay. Okay. So God has made me multi-talented, but yeah. I am blessed to be able to be where God needs me in his season. Okay. And that is so true before i got married i was like god where do you need me in this season where do you need me in this season i ended up married working in the schools with kids and parents i was like whoa it just started right like moving. shit yes. but you gotta give praise when that shit just become yes. like that because it, it come all at once you be it like damn it i did. asked for it but i didn't expect yes. all this shit yes. so it, yes. yeah yeah that yes. makes Absolutely. that make it even better like ooh, Absolutely. every day we Thank see you. the favor in our marriage right. it's like clear to us like people on the outside looking in be like oh my god you guys look like you're in love no we are in love. No, I know. <laughs> like a motherfucker, too. I love it. You know what I'm saying? I, I call y'all a shit. I ain't going to compare y'all to uh, J&B because they, I don't that know what the fuck they be going through. <laughs> Yep. Uh, uh, Obama, Obamas, the and Obamas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it was so funny the other night at the comedy show. Uh -huh. We um took we 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 took a car to Jeffrey's, and when we got out, this lady ran out of line and said, "The newlyweds," and we both looked at her like, "Who is this right. lady?" And we realized this lady was in Vegas at the Blue Martini where we had our like not reception but where we partied right, after right, we right. got married right and, and we it realized turned into the reception it did <laughs> because the dj right, was from bro. the bay area and he kept going the uh, newlyweds lavelle and stacy the newlyweds and i was crazy. like wow we inspire people and don't even know yeah so. for real no Absolutely. you definitely do though i, I see y'all and just see i mean it's like if i if, if i see one i see both Absolutely. yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. and that that's that's a beautiful thing and then y'all black you know what i'm saying y'all young black so yes. it's it's the love is there i see it yes Absolutely. if Thank anybody it, if, if any Anybody don't see it, then fuck them, because <laughs> it's it's there, it's it's it's, it's right there yes. for you. You know what I'm saying? And, and for the people that's not married, you know what I'm saying? This this right here Ooh. is like a, a example of black love. Right. Yes, it can happen. It and sure I, you can. You know what I'm saying? Funny, right? Because I had a homie tell me, man, why you get married as soon as you got out? Nigga, I said, listen, man. I was in jail 28 years. Absolutely. The and fuck? I said, I said, <laughs> why not set a foundation? See, that's what be people's problem yeah. now. I want to go around and just hump on every woman. Right, I Right. Fuck that. that. That shit get played that out. That shit get played out like a motherfucker. I ain't got that much time in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. In a day. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And, and, and a real <laughs> woman, a real woman expensive. Hell yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so imagine you, you three or five, yeah, four, yeah, four exactly. five bitches. Like, God ah, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm broke in the mouth. That shit costs money. That shit costs money. So, you know what I'm saying? If you're doing it how you're supposed to be doing it and treating the woman how you're supposed to be treating her, it ain't hard to just go find one and do all that with it. Hello. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, and have sir. just as much fun. So, that's where I'm at with the whole situation. It was like real easy and no brain uh, freezes or. Or any, you know what I mean, like, oh, should I or should not? No, nah, man. And what made it even liver was my birthday was on the 23rd of April. So 4 23, 23, I never come around again in our lifetime. Oh, that's when y'all got married? Yeah. yeah. On, on your birthday? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. I didn't know you was a tourist. My shit, 420. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that's, that's why we fuck with each yeah. other then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Now, yeah. I do want to ask a question, but did you cry? Oh, like a like a uh, <laughs> like a old ass lady at a funeral. <laughs> it's he a beautiful did, thing. No, he, he did. Cried, he did. He did. Cried. It made I you was cry. Just wiping his eyes. Yes. <laughs> I had a ball. We gonna send you uh, the pictures for sure. Post them. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's yeah, all yeah. good. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Um. Uh. Y'all wanna give a shout out to anybody? Yeah. Uh, yeah. First and foremost, uh, the babies of the bunch. We are gonna start with Lil Vale. We are gonna start with Brandon. We are gonna start with Marseille. 
and we're going to start with the beautiful, incomparable Jalen Murray. Yes, we, we love, love you, you sweetheart. Death, baby. You know what I'm saying? We love you. Straight up. Um, we also want to give a shout out to all the single parents out there that's yes. making it shake. You know what I'm saying? Keep it lit because we love you to death and I applaud you. Yes. I applaud you for who you are and what you are and what you stand for. And just hang in there. I know it might be rough right now, but God damn it, they're going to grow up and they're going to love you to death for being there for them. Thanks. Yes. Just stay true to it. If yeah. there are any parents out there experiencing um, last year or this year coming up, your kids being suspended um, and needing some parent advocacy, please email us at the stewards, T H E S T E W A R T S, at gmail.com. Email us and we will get back to you. Really, we will. No doubt. Where yeah. can they find y'all at on social media if they want to tap in? Okay, you can, um, what's that? Uh, Reforming Redemption on, on IG. Spell it for them because some of these niggas can't spell. I, I say it every show. So yeah. that's, right. that's, that's reform. That's R E F O R M and redemption. Dot. You oh. say dot. Yeah, dot redemption. R E D E M P T I O N. Redemption. And we are the Unstoppable Stewards on Facebook. Follow us, follow us, follow us. Please yes, follow yes. us. And if you're with it, TikTok. I'm simply known as Vale on there, trying to make a shake. And I am Unstoppable Stacy. Our stay tuned for our Unstoppable Stewards TikTok yeah. page. That'll be coming soon. Bye. Cool. And then when yep. y'all when y'all get that, uh, be sure to tap in with me. Let me know hey, as sir. well as uh, we're gonna work on the podcast thing as well. Okay. So y'all might be seeing uh, this beautiful couple uh, a part of the Baylight Radio yes! uh, family. Oh so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, you know it's always about the network. It's always about the network on my part. Um, I want to say um, I I definitely appreciate y'all coming through, um, sharing your gems. Um, You know, my platform is always y'all platform. Anytime you got something coming up, you just tap in with me. You know it's good. It's all love. Um, I want to say thank you uh, for the people that are watching. Uh, Make sure that you uh, get the information that they gave you. Take advantage of it. Uh, If you forgot what they said, rewind this shit after the podcast. And uh, just... uh, Fuck with the stewards. Is it any way we can post this to our pages? Yeah, I will act, I'm, I'm going to send you the link. You got okay. it. Okay, yeah, awesome. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Thank you. Uh, well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the stewards. Woo-hoo. And we'll be back after these messages. This is Mad Mondays.
all my niggas to link with. I'm the real one that like to ride dirty. Sit down for the trees for AK-223. But it's a skin trapping like killer birds. Thirsty for blood like leeches and vampires. Ruling over the world with tights, cannons, and men pie. Smashing on you second spot till you niggas divide. Leave you sitting there, riding snake in the side. You guys, your poodles no longer breathing. Your mama's just in the net, I'm receiving. Now you niggas sleeping in the sand. The who riders chop a sign in. See me, see me, see D, see G from the lower bottom to the DP. Sneakers busting heat, selling me, smashing up and down the street, trying to stack DOE every day of the week. Mr. Whippin' G Car Jackins is a treat for the Thug Delicious. Stand vicious on these bitches, blow down with the quickest. Get crowned with this sick shit. Cop pounds and get rid of it. Turn around and split your wig. I'm a pop smoker. Can you handle that? I max a bitch. Leaves us standing in the tracks in October. I'll be growing, you know her. If you know me, I'm the one that's rolling Doja. Taylor made. Cool, calm, with composure. Hit the dash. Through the donut, then I smash. Quick, fast. But what the fuck you know the cash? All in black. Without no motherfucking mask. Get mask, get mask, get mask. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, we're back. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. This is Mad Mondays. I'm your host, White Out. And uh, I want to give a shout out to the stewards one more time for coming through and breaking them gems. Uh, y'all make sure y'all follow them, check them out, and be looking um, forward to their podcast. They're in uh, negotiations right now, nigga, so it might be sooner than later. <laughs> but without further ado, uh, my next guest, my brother in comedy. Been doing his thing. Um, finally got him in here. This nigga be working out. He's muscle man and <laughs> do all kind of shit though. But uh, where are you from? What city are you from? Man, that's a. I'm from. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I was born in Hayward and and I did all my schooling in San Leandro. Okay. Lived between San Leandro and San Lorenzo, but San Lorenzo for the longest. All right, so all the way from the Bay Area, ladies and you gentlemen, know. please <laughs> give it up for my man Jose. You know I be fucking your last name up. Contrary. Contrary. See, I would fuck see, it up. I, you see how American I say it? Because the Mexicans be mad that I don't put the Spanish on. It's supposed like to be Contreras. Contreras. Right. But it's, Contreras, you can't fuck up Contreras. I thought. But. So my guy, welcome, brother. Appreciate you, man. Uh, so uh, for the I know who you are. You know what I'm saying. But for the people that's watching uh, in Twitch land right now, can you just uh, break it down? Let them know a little bit about yourself. What you got going on? Yeah, hey, I'm not gonna lie. First, I thought Twitch was just for like video games and shit. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Po- that's dope. Shout out to the Twitchers. Right. Uh, <laughs> the, the Twitchers and the Tweakers. Right. I don't, no, but anyway, uh, I'm. What, what was the question again? Uh, Tell him about you? myself. Yeah, yeah, let him know who you is. Hey, Jose Contreras out of the Bay Area. Uh, been doing comedy going on 10 years now, stand-up comedy. I've also participated in a little bit of theater here and there. And then I'm, I'm all around regular as dude, 9 to 5 job, kids, you know, the regular life shit. And the gym, the gym, of course, you, as well. I try to get you my got, hook. You, you got kids? Yeah, man. How many kids you got? Two of them things. For real? How old? Four and two. Okay. Oh, you got little kids. I thought, you know, I thought my career was going to be a little further along than it is right now. So I was slinging dick. I'm not going to lie. I was irresponsible. And now I got to pay for it. But it's a lovely thing. It's lovely. That's what's up. Two and four. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember them, them them times. Man. The terrible two and four. It's like, God. That shit carries over. That, it don't stop at two. That's the crazy part. It right. just gets, it, get, it enhances. These right. Little, yeah, for real. New they, kids <laughs> are different, man. <laughs> hey, so you say you've been doing comedy 10 years. So uh, going what, on. Yep, what, anyway. what made you, what made you get into it's a comedy though, bro. Football didn't work out. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted to play football. I thought I was gonna have a chance to be in the NFL. Boy, was I wrong. But <laughs> I tried. Um, I, I briefly walked on on the Cal football team, Berkeley. Didn't work out. They had Keenan Allen. They need Jose Contreras. <laughs> Shout out to Keenan Allen. And um, I man, I was in college. Like, what the fuck am I doing? I didn't care about college because college, I knew I was smart. Right. I only wanted to play football. Right. And then when that didn't work, I was like, what the fuck? This is all stupid. So I started doing spoken word. And spoken word was cool, but then 
the, I didn't I didn't like a lot of the spoken word that I was seeing that was popular because I was like this I want to get out here and sound like Melly Mel and shit, broken glass that's the type of shit I want to do <laughs> in my spoken word but their spoken word is like my father touched me I'm like oh hey okay all right this ain't this ain't the lane for me and I realized I like making people laugh more and I've always been the funny dude in school so right. let me go I bit up the nerve to try it oh that was another thing. Football didn't work. My girlfriend left me. She was fucking football players. I was like, oh, my God. This, uh, I shit. needed to express myself Yeah, you didn't need her. Somehow. Fuck her. And, no, I mean, she was doing her thing. I, I can't blame her, but <laughs> shit. said she was doing her thing. <laughs> she, she was putting up numbers out here. I was. <laughs> I needed to get my shit together. Uh, but, yeah, that made me bite up the nerves. Let me try comedy. Fuck it. And uh, that was that was one of the con- uh, pieces of jokes, the content that I had, was talking about going through a breakup and shit. That was yeah. like, my first time. Uh-huh. First time was at Tommy T's. Okay. Shout open out to mic, Tommy T's. And I won the little open mic competition right. that night. Look, uh, twenty five dollars. <laughs> and I thought I thought I was amazing. I was like, what? These what? I'm a, I just started. What? They got they got cheap on that. They used to be a honey. Shit, yeah. It was, it was, I don't know what it is now. It might be like twelve. Who knows? Right. At this point, <laughs> with inflation, get taxed for it. But yeah, that that's what um ever and I once I won that competition. Next time I did terrible. The next time after that was so so. But I was like, I like this shit. I want to keep. Keep doing it. What high school you went to, bro? San Leandro. Okay, okay. So you did play football? Yes, San Leandro High School. What position? Receiver. Receiver and uh, occasionally safety. Okay. Corner sometimes. I was terrible on defense. Was you good in uh, at your position? I was all right. I wasn't that good. My, I would get nervous, drop the ball too, too many damn times. But – I found out a way to walk my ass on to the Cal football team still. Even with yeah, the, did yeah. a uh, did a brief um, – before I went to Cal, I did a semester at Laney because I was a spring admit. So I played for Coach Bean briefly okay, okay. Uh, just to make sure Shout I was out up Coach on my – Shout out Coach Bean. And through him, actually, that was – kind of, the network at Laney kind of got me through Cal because the dude, the gentleman's name was uh, KP. Yeah, K- K- uh, Keith, Keith. Yes, sir. Keith, that's he my was, nigga. He was in charge of um, – the walk on shit, and he he seen that I went to Lane. He's like, oh, what, Coach B? No, Hell, Kevin. Yeah. It's Kevin. His brother was Keith. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Parker. I Kevin. had him. I had him saved as KP in my phone. Yeah, yeah, that's my nigga. But um, now I, I I wasn't. I feel like I left a lot of potential out there, and that's why I also attack comedy so hard because it's like I feel like I'm trying to live my unfulfilled dreams. Yeah, well, you doing? And that's good. also why I was fucking so many women because I was like, <laughs> I felt like you know if I can't make it pro, I le- I need to feel like a pro. Right, right, right. So I, I, I like uh, <laughs> some of the because you've been rocking. I, I've seen you. Um, for a minute, I, I was like, where you go? Did you take a break or something? Or you just? Social media, I just, I, you know, I like to just work. And that's been right. to a detriment um, to me as well as many of our peers is where I've been doing, I've, I've been working the entire time, but I just don't be on social media all the time. Okay, got you. Which is, it is a part of the job. That's, yeah. that is the number one thing that is keeping so many of us back from where we should be is Fact. the social media because yeah. it's a fucking job. Right. So, um, 10 years, what, when, when did you realize, like, your first showcase? Uh-huh. That they gave you a Tommy T's, you know, uh-huh. when they give you the tickets and shit. Uh-huh. Did you have a lot of people come out for you? Because you I know when you first start doing comedy, yeah, yeah. like you tell motherfuckers you're doing comedy, they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna come fuck oh, with come you. They you. they fuck with you, and then them niggas and you don't see them ever again. That's very and, and it's understandable too, because you know that, that's the hard part about doing like a weekday show at, at a comedy club. For example, Tommy T's, mm-hmm. grateful for the opportunities, but if you think about it. In the concept of the Bay Area, my audience is largely going to be East Bay. Uh, and then commuting to Pleasanton in the middle of the week right. after they got off of work right. on a Thursday or a Wednesday, right. very, very fucking difficult. So the first few times, decent turnouts because people want to see. Mm-hmm. After that, definitely go through struggles. We all go through struggles even now at times. It's just kind of playing the game of – of yeah, dealing with the fact that people work till six o'clock. Right. Your show starts at seven thirty. Right. <laughs> they want to go home, shower, Change shit, shit eat, right? Yeah. Save yeah. so they can save some money and stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at two, but two it, item minimum. I, th- I think it, my biggest show there was a night before Thanksgiving uh, one year. George Wallace came through and did a guest set, and that was like. How many years? That was like maybe five years in. That was like that. that was uh, it was your show. Yeah, my my show. I threw the show. I headlined the show. Uh, I had Jay Rich on it. I had uh, Rudy Ortiz on it. I might have had Melvin Jr. on it. And then um, through the radio, I believe is where. Jo- no, no, no. George Wallace was there that weekend. 
and he was just there early. So he decided to – he asked he politely, can I get a guest out? Hell, yeah. George, George Wallace. Wallace. Hell, yes, hell, sir. Yeah, sir. Yes, you can. My show this shit now, <laughs> nigga. You ain't got George Wallace on your show, nigga. He, <laughs> he came through and he killed it. I had to follow him. It was like 100 – it was like a little <laughs> over 200 people in there. That yeah. was a great night. Yeah, night oh, yeah. That was a nice night. Yep. That was a nice night. That's big. You still throwing shows and shit too, though, right? Yeah. trying. I've been trying to find um, different – locations because Tommy T's I like doing it occasionally but it's a struggle to be quite frank it's a struggle doing it during the week mm -hmm. giving those uh, factors that I've laid out so I've been searching for a weekend venue and I'm finally closing in on one in San Jose okay. uh, as of now Tabard Theater September 2nd Jose Contreras downtown San Jose it's a Saturday show nine o'clock show downtown San Jose which is like a get to be quite frank, for everybody else in the Bay, East Bay and whatnot, going to San Jose is like a mini vacation at times because you, yeah. don't, you don't be out that way Hell that nah. much. Hell no, I ain't been to San Jose. I ain't even lie. I ain't been to San Jose in some years. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's it's a great nightlife scene, so I, I'm very excited for the capabilities of what we can do for the show because oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to market it like it's a mini vacation. Hell, Hell yeah. Take your ass. Hey, rent a room if you got to. So you got the – what day was it? September 2nd. September okay. 2nd. Okay, so you got time to push that. Oh, yeah. It's like – it's. Four or five weeks, a little scary because I, I like to have a little bit longer, but I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident because I, I wanted a weekend bed. That's been the number one feedback that I always get from people is, I, oh, I would go <coughs> but, if it was a weekend. Right, right. Well, nigga, yeah, we September, got it September we got it 2nd, b bring your ass. Half of them was bullshitting anyway, but we you know, no, we got it. We got it. I'm going to get this. We're going to get this thing sold out. So you, you, you in a relationship right now? Damn, you gonna go? What, what? What just happened? How we? Because my next question. Hey, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm telling on myself. My next question was gonna be like, uh, how does the comedy life uh, treating you far as getting pussy? Oh man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I, Do you mean, know they say when you're funny, you get the pussy? Yeah, it is true. Yes, uh, yes, I am in, in a relationship with my son's mother. Okay. And, that's what's up. Um, I'm also, you know, I, I, I've been known at times to, to uh, you know, pussy falls in my lap, and sometimes I just got to catch it. <laughs> I, but I, I, would, I would say sometimes, yeah, sometimes I feel like a rock star. I'm not going to lie. After Mario Hodges' special on uh, Saturday night, man. It, the aunties were on me. It was it was amazing. It was just, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> I was in my element. They was in theirs. I was like, oh, shit. They tipsy and shit. They, they was definitely feeling. Hiding you know, all kind of shit. I, you know, with the muscles and stuff a little bit. I, <laughs> I look like I could clean their pool well or some shit. I right. don't know. But, they, but uh, I, I don't think I've got. I haven't gotten hella groupies like that off of comedy yet, which is sometimes I feel a way about that. I'm like, hold on, bitch. I'm funny and cute like I should. <laughs> there should be a few more of y'all lined up. But I definitely get a lot of politeness a lot of women are polite to me um and, and sometimes they're extra flirty with me right but not yeah not it's i'm not putting in rock star numbers just yet and i am sometimes i fear like whoo you know i be slipping up sometimes now i can only imagine if i'm famous right, right. now <laughs> it's a whole different caliber coming in right. it's, it takes a lot of restraint and the thing that my issue is i've always felt that i was handsome but everybody else didn't feel that way till about three four years ago and so now it's like, I always joke, it's like what Dr. Dre said, I just want to fuck bad bitches. <laughs> all the nights I never had bitches. Right. Now I'm all up in that ass. <laughs> bad ass your boyfriend, ain't you? It's him. <laughs> Self-control, discipline, I'm working on it for sure. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> I, 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 I do want to say congratulations on uh, on that set Saturday. That shit was fire. Thank you, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, you, you wasn't even expecting. You came for the support. Man, yes, I I just came to because I really was curious to see you know I, he's shooting a special right what kind of what kind of things are going through his head what is the thought process what's was, the behind the scenes look like that nigga was nervous in a motherfucker I'm I like, can't nigga, I, I would be too it's I, okay just yeah. be cool <laughs> don't get up there being nervous but I mean that's that's something that he always said that he do but it's yeah I, I'm finding out that a lot of Jerry Law said the same fucking thing he said he get nervous before he uh before he do a show I'm nervous as hell and um. I've learned to be okay with it. I, you know, growing up, I wanted to be in the NFL, idolized a lot of NFL dudes because they're like gladiators and real men, and right. one of those being Jerry Rice. And Jerry Rice, I remember him saying in regards to nerves, just talking about, yeah, yes, I'm nervous every damn game. The The thing is, though, I know he knows how to control his nerves. Right. And his, his thought process was, if you ain't nervous, it don't matter enough to you. Which is a concept that I've, it's always kind of stuck with me because yeah, I want to do what I want to do amazing. I want women throwing pussy at me after the show. <laughs> I want people telling me that this was the funniest shit they ever heard. Right. So that's a lot of pressure I'm putting on myself because it matters, and yet those nerves will definitely yeah they're always there, and I I just do my best to um to channel them 
in, in the proper direction. But it's also one thing I've noticed, too. It's also funny because every now and then, you know, bomb. I bomb. You bomb. Everybody bombs. Right. And sometimes the bomb was just because your energy was off. You were sluggish, right. whatever. Yeah. But sometimes I notice, especially in an area where it's like a bunch of comics there, like, say, Punchline on a Sunday night or the, any of the improvs where it's a bunch of comics hoping to get on, mm -hmm. the energy could be fucked up sometimes. Yeah. And that negative energy yeah. can fuck with your nerves even more, right, right. whether it be now you're more scared and, and and now you get up there and freeze, or now your your focus goes on I want to prove these motherfuckers wrong, right? And now you wasting energy, yep. directing it at other people, other people instead of at the task at hand, right? Real so tough. yeah, that, that's a yeah, but the nerves are always there. Who are some of the uh, famous comedians like this, like that, like a, that's own? Like who who have you had the opportunity to work with? I got to. Uh, I was one of the openers. For Tommy Davidson at the Bell Theater. Oh, that's once. big. And he was cool. He was a cool ass dude too. It was yeah. like, cause I'm he a legend. I'm, right. Usually I'm already in my mind. Legends might be assholes. It's possible. Right. Complete opposite. Very cool dude. Uh, I, I got to open for George Wallace after he did my show. He let me do his. Oh, for real? Uh huh. That and weekend. George Wallace is one that I've actually kept in contact with. That's oh, somebody that's big. that I personally had text conversations with and shit. That and was pretty cool. Don't he got the shit in uh, Vegas still? Uh, yes, that? Uh, that and he got t uh, TV shows, but I know I don't know how it is now with the strike going on. Okay, right, right, right. But yeah. he, he definitely had TV shows. Um, who else? Uh, I opened for Finesse Mitchell at Tommy T's before. Funny dude. Uh, yes, very, and he used to play for the uh, University of Miami Hurricanes. Oh, for real? That's that. I ain't gonna lie. Also, corny shit. I be trying to figure out ways. Like you know, they never call me for the weekend spots. How can I do it? So I, I'm watching the Breakfast Club. Finesse is on. And he brings up, I think he had on some Miami shit, and it comes up how he used to play football for University of Miami. That's my that's my favorite football team. I got hella gear. So I show up to Tommy T's one day with my gear on the show. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm such a Hurricanes fan. Did you know Finesse Mitchell play, should, played for the Hurricanes? Uh -huh. And they're like, oh, my God, yeah. He's going to be here this weekend. Did you want to open? And I was like, oh, yes, I do. Network. And then I, <laughs> and, and while I showed up <laughs> to the show wearing Miami shit, and he looked at me with such a weird look, like, what the fuck is... And I felt, and I felt so pathetic, but I, I needed those five minutes of stage right. time. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. And I I think think I, you thought you was going to come in there, and then he was like, hey, my yeah. old brother, high five. And he was just, he like, looked like... And then it was fucked up, because the set went well, but at the time, I was doing a joke on little people, and I used the word midget, and there was a midget in the front row. Fuck. <laughs> but I, in, in my defense, it was dark, and, and the seat was <laughs> elevated, so I thought she was regular. I didn't know. But she was low-key complaining after the show. Oh, hell <laughs> To no. him, he's like, it's, you know, after the show, right in front of Tommy T's, everybody's talking right there, shaking hands. He's right there. Here come Little Miss Lady <laughs> right there, and she kind of causing a ruckus because she didn't like some of the midget material. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sitting here with this Miami shit on, finesse right there. I'm, and he looked at me again, and I'm like, oh, shit. So I, I definitely exited the building immediately. Did you say, did you apologize? I didn't say nothing. I, I ended up meeting him again, but he didn't remember me, thankfully. So I was like, okay, cool. Nah, did you apologize to the lady? Nah, I was just looking at her like, oh, my God, she's so angry. <laughs> I was I was, a little, I was afraid for my kneecaps or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she was hella mad. <laughs> I, I would have been rolling after that like, fuck, I really didn't <laughs> see you, ma'am. That happened to me another uh, that same bit that I want I was in LA once doing an open mic and there was a comic who had a condition she wasn't a, a, a little person but it was like this is gonna sound fucked up there's the only way I can describe it <laughs> if if you've ever seen the movie Monsters Inc you ever seen Monsters yeah. Inc you know who Mike Wazowski is yes the little green one yeah she was uh, she was shaped like that like from the waist down there was something wrong with her body I don't know God you know I hope she's doing well but I was like I went to, I, to another comic I was like joke on midgets i don't know if i should with her here should i do it right. and he was just an asshole he was like i, I mean i don't know and I, that was that negative energy right right, right another yeah. comic would have said well i mean if you don't feel comfortable don't do it or fuck it man right. it's a joke don't it's worry a joke, about that right. <laughs> but i did feel i was like i ain't trying to after little miss lady popped off on me i was like i don't want right mike like, wazowski coming at me That's right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't do the joke i didn't do it that night <laughs> I made I made a QB read QB option right read. yeah yeah that's what's up um, you got some shit coming up soon huh yes sir I'm, I'm getting getting the bookings is picking up a little bit I got uh, this Thursday cancel culture is the name of the show it is in uh, San Francisco the exact 
uh, establishment is I don't it is Cancel Culture City is the name of the show. Uh, 1799 Mission Street in San Francisco. Who on AG thing? It is me, Carla Clay, and Chad o- Optis. O- Opti- and that's that's Optis. This, that's this Thursday. This Thursday, San Francisco. Venturing over to that side of the bridge, trying to you know make sure they know oh, yeah. who I am too. Yeah, for sure, most definitely. Um, I need to start heading back over there too. I need to get back out to San Jose too, though. San Jose. I'm all right. Here's let's good. Let's uh, let's talk some nerd comedy shit. First and foremost, it's segregated. It's a segregated culture. Every right. if you're you don't really realize that till you get into it. You're right. like, damn, all the big shows go to the white boys. That's right. crazy. Yeah. But San Francisco is typically known as the as the white side. Oakland East Bay is urban, right? It's like, but yeah, now that's it's, what they it's call it gentrifi- urban. It's gentrified now, and right? White right. boys is here too. <laughs> San Jose is it's a lot of Latins in San Jose. San Jose is one of my favorite scenes. That's which is why I'm so glad I'm, I'm doing a show out there, September second, Tabor Theater, uh, because the love out there, man, it's real community. San Jose, the the comic community, it's not condescending. It's not a bunch of assholes. It's, it's for the most part a bunch of genuine people. Now, granted. So if you can overlook, so like, for example, one of my favorite open mics is uh, Wednesday nights at the Caravan. It's a dive bar. And okay. a dive bar has dive bar vibes. I didn't even know what a dive bar was, bro, until it's, like a couple months ago. It'd be some weird shit in a dive bar, yo. Because he, he DJs out in um in Frisco at a dive bar. And they explained to me what a dive bar yep. was. And I was just like, what it'd be the hella, fuck is a dive bar? Hella weird graffiti <laughs> and devil worship shit. They be, <laughs> they be having little devil dolls. and it, It's that vibe, but it'd be fun night. Like, it's a great place to go to an open mic and work out your material. There might be a crowd. There might not. But you're going to get some good work in. Right. A- and on top of that, the, the energy thing that I was describing earlier, mm-hmm. you're not going to deal with a negative-ass energy when you're in a vulnerable state. Because when you're creative... That's a vulnerable state. Right. Imagine if in the studio uh, with Outkast back in the day, there was a motherfucker in the studio telling Andre, "Hey, I don't, I don't know. You're a little suspect with the wigs and shit right now." Right. And instead of just allowing him to create bombs over Baghdad or something right. like that. Yeah. Real talk. It's, so it, San Jose has a, has a great vibe, community vibe to it. I highly suggest getting out there. It's a lot of good work out there too. You ain't gonna be a millionaire necessarily, you know, doing these local shows, but. You're going to get a lot of good stage time, yeah. meet some cool people, and, and get in front, front of some good crowds. Because you know you know Pete Munoz? Pete Munoz, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, he book, yeah. Hey, Pete Munoz is very, has been very generous to me with his shows. He's always doing great stuff. And he had a, um, a great open mic called Woodhams on Mondays that recently they shut the open mic down, but they're doing a showcase now. Okay. But San Jose is a, San Jose is a great spot for comedy. San Francisco has a lot more – lucrative opportunities yeah. in terms of audience right. and, and tapings, so on and so forth. Right. But they're segregated. Right. Yeah, I need to get back out. Uh, well, shit, I, I, um, I, I just tapped in with Stroy uh, a couple of weeks ago, and she, you know, they got a hella, of, hella funny guy. Yeah, hell, they got hella shit, though. But Stroy I, is Mr. Monopoly of Man, company, God man, damn. I, I'm like, <laughs> uh, I tap in with the nigga, then he put me in a group with uh, Big T and uh, some female named Karen something uh-huh. and another dude, but they all got fucking rooms. I'm like, uh, can you help my partner out? He like, can you help my partner out with a room? Yeah, I got a uh, a day on uh, this day, day two shows. Uh, one at the Oyster House and uh, yep. two shows. I'm like, God damn, that nigga said, uh, put me on, nigga. Y'all putting the nigga on. And I'm like, shit. But I didn't know they had that many fucking rooms. Like he got room. Uh, one of the hella funny cats got a room in Oakland. Yep. And they got hella shit in Frisco. So I'm like, damn, this nigga really moving, man. Shout out to Shrew. I need to get him on this motherfucker one uh. One that would, I would definitely love. That would be very very entertaining to see. Stroy is. I look at him as as damn near the mastermind in the Bay Area when it comes to running all of these venues. Yeah. Now, now, granted. That's a lot of work, bro. It, it, it's, damn, it's not, some of these rooms, it ain't like it's 3,000 people that are sitting right. in it or whatever. But the amount of rooms that he has every right. day of the week, yeah. I would say, is right up there with somebody who's selling, who may be selling out a 700 people theater yeah. every yeah. month or whatever. Because yeah. he's doing this every day. Like, yeah, literally. Yeah. I'm like, God damn. Uh, you ever had you had a chance to work with him? Uh, I've worked on it. I just did so I've done his shows that are that he you know he's kind of oversees. Right. Um, and then I've gotten booked directly by him. I don't know if I've gotten booked directly by him, and if I did, it was it's been a while. But I've done quite a few of hell, of the hella funny shows. I just did one um, like last Sunday. They got a lot of dispensary shows. Oh no shit! In, in SF, and dispensary okay. shows be cool because. 
the pressure is usually not there, but then it, sometimes the vibe can be off because everybody's high. So nobody, yeah. so ain't nobody really focused on. Right, the right. They, they catch it later than a month, yeah. late than a motherfucker. And they get it in the car, like, oh, okay, that's what that nigga feel. Or, when or he they're just that. staring at you, you know, right? You know, <laughs> you know, is, is there something on my shirt right now? What the fuck? I did a show. Uh, I did smokes and jokes with uh, out there in Sac with Michael Calvin. Yep. And one of Shout the shows, <laughs> one of the shows was just like that. I'm like, these niggas must be high than a motherfucker because everybody was just. Sitting here like stuck, and I'm like, hey, smoking joke. Another show where the aunties fuck with me. Tough. I fuck. I, <laughs> <laughs> bro, I love. I love me aunties. Some good See, he respecting y'all. Ain't even calling the old women cougars. He's yeah, like, nah, yeah, aunties. Nah. aunties. Y'all just mm. sometimes they cougars. They real nasty in their forties. I like them. Right. Hey, but if you had, um, if you had an opportunity to perform with, um, who, who, matter of fact, who who is your favorite comedian? Top five favorite comedians. Damn, I I don't have a straightforward answer, but I'll start. I'll say this: first person who made me think that comedy was um, cool to the motherfucker was Eddie Murphy with the red delirious suit on. Okay, um, and then George Lopez, my mom's husband, had a, a burnt CD with George Lopez's album or, or from a show or whatever on mm-hmm. it, and I would listen to it back when Walkmans were a thing on the way to school. Right. I would listen to that <laughs> shit, um, and I didn't. I don't speak Spanish. And a lot of his jokes, the punchline was in Spanish, but the tone and the delivery of it was so fucking fly. And then the way that the entire audience is dying laughing, and so it makes you laugh, domino right. effect. I thought that that was uh, that's where I kind of was the the light bulb kind of went off just a little bit, like, uh, oh shit, this is oh wow, this is pretty right. pretty dope. I, I, I <laughs> kind of find myself copying him. Uh, and then Chris Rock, Chris Rock, uh, I've always just loved his matter of fact style, um, and, and kind of just. At least back then, um, talking about just real um, societal subjects, shit right. that was going on, uh, and Dave Chappelle, and then as as a comedian, um, Patrice O'Neill, yeah, R.I.P. for sure. Yeah. Elephant in the Room is like wow to me. It's just the shit, the concepts. That's the type of shit that I like joking about. Is shit that because some some of the, his jokes. If we did similar shit in San Francisco, it'll be a white woman up front looking at you like this. Right. Uh, if there's somebody gay in the audience and you offended them, it's oh shit. It's now <laughs> now everybody's looking at you like you're the most homophobic, racist. Right. It, that's crazy. It'd be a bunch of white people looking at you like you racist. You're right. Like, hold on, hey, hold on now. <laughs> How'd y'all flip the script? Right. You really uh, flipped it on a nigga too. <laughs> <laughs> but but tr- yeah, Patrice O'Neill, oh man. Um he like that's t- him, Chappelle, Rock. Is is the style that I particularly love, the subject matter that I particularly love. Uh, right now, I'm a big fan of Ali Sadiq. Was that us talking the other yeah, night? I was talking. You was talking. I was, you I was telling me about that. that. Okay, so text. I, I need your number so you can text me his name, bro. I'm gonna check his shit. Yes, out sir. When I get yes, to the sir. House. Ali Sadiq. He got. He released the Domino Effect uh, one and two on YouTube, and two just came out. And, and to me, it was uh, a special that was actually special, which unfortunately it feels like. Nowadays, for due to a number of factors, due to the fact that our brain span, like we got TikTok brain now, right. or if, if it ain't 15 seconds, I'm not listening. Right. Um, and, and then on top of that, subject matter just kind of seems watered down because o- people are almost hitting on algorithm uh, buzz lines. Okay. Buzzwords are, are right. used. A lot. It's almost like a lot of a lot of art shit that you see, TV shows, movies. Mm-hmm. You listen to the dialogue and you're like you stole all this shit from Twitter. That's, I'm hearing Twitter algorithm right. in your fucking dialogue, mm-hmm. and, and but his shit talking about his up his up uh, bringing to an extent and um, going from how when he was a kid and then he ends up selling dope and then he ends up going to jail um, and what he's going through during that time. This mm-hmm. this special, I fucking cried during this special. There's a moment in there that's gonna make you cry. There, uh, I, I laughed, I listened, learned. It's like damn, dude, this that was a good ass special. Okay. So yeah, some. Not a straightforward answer, but that's the yeah. No, no, nah, no. Nah, nah. I, I totally get it. I mean, shit. That was that was your five. That was your five. Um, <clears throat> if you could work with any 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 comedian, who would you like working with? Damn. Um. To, I get working like doing the comedy circuit. I'm open to working with anybody. If you right. need to book, <laughs> right. me, go ahead. But like, Tap in. but I would. <laughs> I, I would love. To be around um, Kevin Hart when he's doing his thing, um, I don't necessarily I think that when I f- like when I first thought of me doing this, I'm like I want to be, I got to be Eddie Eddie Murphy 
Richard Pryor. I got to be this status of success. Right. Got to be. I wanted to be Jerry Rice in the league. I got to be Jerry in this if, right. or, or my own form, right? right. So that's right. the standard. But now learning more, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if I because you're under such a microscope and it starts to affect your uh, your artwork to where you know some people might say you suck, but in reality, you got so many mouths to feed off of so many different right. deals if you say this you're gonna fuck up the money over there Facts. so it's like i don't know if i want to be that big but i would want to study the way he works and stuff so i can get an idea of okay so I, this is somebody doing it at the top yeah. level right this is what he's doing now what can we learn from that and apply to myself thanks uh that would be like just all around comedy business doing like maybe a movie or something mm -hmm. You know what? I just random thought right now. I would love to work with JB Smooth. JB Smooth. He's funny too. It, oh, I just TV like his shit. voice and shit. <laughs> Dude, he, he got his his voice, and it's almost like uh, I don't know where his where his uh, I, I'll say accent, I guess, or twang is right. is from. <laughs> Sounds New Yorkish, but it also is like a big ass lisp. And, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I seen a bit of his where he fucking did a pile driver on a chair. Like he, he was, he was acting out a scenario, uh -huh. and then he fucking ends it with doing a pile driver, wrestling pile driver on a chair. Like oh, you making me mad? Bow drops on the floor. Hell no! And it was, it was, it was like old school physical, but it was funny. As, I was like, damn. But I would love to be um, with him, like on a TV show. One of my favorite lines was uh, Kevin Hart's um, "Real Husbands" of, yeah. of Hollywood, mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, and Kevin slapped Robin Thicke in the yeah, show. Yeah, And then J.B. Smooth, uh, Robin asked, he's like, did he just slap me? And then J.B. Smooth was like, he just slapped about three songs out your ass. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> that shit was shit, funny. The way he said that, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, uh, right now, Top of the Dome, that's in the, being around Chappelle, too, and, and uh, I would love to see his thought process. What, you know, what is, what's the type of shit that he's on when he's, when he's quiet? So not to uh, kind of weird people watching type shit, but like in a in a welcome space where I have consent to be in his space, not right. like spying on him. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to see like how is he how is he main how is he navigating the room and shit prior to him performing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can we show uh, a picture of the flyer right quick for a show coming up? Uh, where can they find you at on social media, bro? I am on uh, Instagram at JC Like Jesus. Uh, it's a play on my initials, Jose Contreras. JC Like I'm not like God, but you know. <laughs> at this point, I thought about changing it, but I was like, on the way on the way to the top, what do I look like taking God out of my life right now? Why would I take God? <laughs> right. that's, that's a bad look. It looks like I'm selling my soul to the devil if I take out God now. Right, like a, JC Like Jesus, Instagram. Uh, JC Like Jesus on Twitter. Um, Jose Contreras Comedy on YouTube. And Jose Contreras on Facebook. And what else? Um, um, you want to give a shout out to anybody? Well, first off, I, I, I want to give all thanks to God. <laughs> uh, all, all thanks to God. And um, you know what? Shout out to everybody that, that's just continuously pushing forward. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody that is getting up every day and doing what they got to do, even when they don't want to do it, just because they know – that there could be consequences and repercussions if they don't do what they got to do. So shout out to y'all. I'm rooting for everybody. Um, and shout out to all of us in the Bay. Uh, I hope that as, as few windows get busted into as possible and out this motherfucker <laughs> in the next few months. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm really rooting for all of us, man. All of us working people that is just trying to, to live an honest life and, and enjoy ourselves while we're here. I'm, I'm rooting for you. I'm always rooting for you, bro. Like I said, uh, you too. You as well. Any uh, anytime you available and uh, got some shows coming up soon. We showing the that's that's the show this Thursday, y'all. If y'all available, hey. pull up on them. Tell them two sent you. Um, I just want to say, man, uh, just keep doing your thing, bro. Like for real, keep keep you keep the well. funny, keep the funny coming. Um, because you are a funny brother. Um, I see you grinding. I see you hustling. 
And uh, mm-hmm. shit, we need more. We need more funny out here, man. So keep doing your thing. Um, if you got <clears throat> anything that you got coming up, you can always just tap in with me. Let me know. We'll put your shit on the uh, podcast. Or if you want to come back and um, 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 just talk about it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? My my, 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 my stage is your stage, brother. Hey, hell, I'm going to tell Jay we probably going to be back for that September 2nd show, Tabard Theater. For okay, sure. yeah, for sure, for yes, sure. So, Thank yeah. you for having me, and I'm rooting for you as well. And I, you've always been funny, and I've always respected – just how how well into business you are. I've been to shows where you throw in the show, you performing on the show, you cooking hot dogs and shit <laughs> outside in the hallway at the Black Rep uh, Theater. I'm just like, damn, man, wearing all these hats. Salute to you. And Thank then you, I brother. see you talking about your regular job and helping people and whatnot. I respect your grind, and I'm rooting for you as well, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. All the way from the Bay Area, give it up one more time for Jose Contreras. Did I say it right? Contreras. 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 But when you said it, it sounded like a wrestler. Contreras. <laughs> it's Mondays. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Are we wrapping up now? You want to wrap up now? Oh, okay. Fuck it. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Boy, you know how I'm moving. Let see what I'm doing on the paper. I'm Boy, yeah, I'm with the funny, yeah, laughing out loud, man, that's how I get this money, boy, boy style. Man, you know how I'm moving, man, you see what I'm doing on the paper, I'm with boy, boy style. style. Yeah, I'm with the funny, yeah. laughing out loud, man, that's how I get this money, boy, boy style. style. This California living got me laughing my ass off. My girl holding her tummy, going big, purple rain when it's sunny. In the line at the bank, hella high with the munchies, boy, boy style. style. Now that's comedy, boy, stop the girl, she Facebook me W-I-G-H-T, out splat in her face, now her vision blurry Yep, in a hurry, wipe it out, boy, stop at Twitter Follow me to the top, that's when you get the fucking picture, boy, stop Got a nigga rolling hella dope, bad chick in the front row, man, she wanna poke Boy, stop, got me shaking my damn head, he getting on the crowd, man, you heard what that man said Boy, stop Got a nigga rolling, shaking my damn head, he getting on the crowd, man, you heard what that man said Boy, stop yeah, girl, stop, y'all stop, boy, stop. It's a movement, movement. straight. But I represent the whole town. It's town business. Man, this was a good motherfucking episode right here. This was a good episode uh, on Mad Mondays, man. I want to give a shout out to uh, Jose Contreras as well as the stewards, <coughs> Miss Stacy and Lavelle. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. We, uh, excuse me. Thank y'all for coming. I definitely appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, this is going to conclude uh, Mad Mondays a little bit because you got something going on this week. Would you talk talk to us with Talk Back? Uh, I'm in the clutch tonight. I'm gonna be at the Artist Retreat DJing. Oh shit, that's what's you up. feel me? <laughs> and then uh, check it out. We got a uh, Aloha Bar this Friday. That's it, man. We we slow this week. Oh, next Sunday the thirtieth. We uh we got we DJ for the kids, man, with Miss Kedra. Stay tuned. I'm gonna bring that flyer. We got that coming. Where's that at? This out here? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be in Oakland. It's gonna be in Oakland. Well, I forgot the park, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna bring the information. So I. Okay, that's that. You said y'all. that's the thirtieth. The yep, the thirtieth. Okay, for sure. Um, shit, I ain't got shit going on this week. I don't think as of right now. I don't think so. Um, looking forward to this Vegas trip that I got uh, for uh, Dre Snack's birthday function. Um, yeah, we'll be. Um, I'll be talking to somebody. We uh, it's time for another show. Um, so yeah, show on deck is coming real soon. Um, I just want to say thank everybody for tuning in to Mad Mondays. Um, you know, what I'm saying the support is always appreciated. Uh, like we said, well, this is our third season, episode twelve or thirteen. But um, we do this shit because we love doing it. But then we do it because we have support and uh, people that actually fuck with us. So I definitely want to say thank you and keep uh, supporting us as well as all the other shows during the week on um, Bay Life Radio. Um, yeah. Um, Thank y'all, for real. Um, That's going to wrap it up for today, man. Y'all be safe in these streets, please. Um, And until next Monday, two out. God bless y'all. I'm with the funny, I'm laughing out loud, man, that's how I get this money, boy, it's time. You know how I'm moving, man, you see what I'm doing on the paper, I'm with the funny, boy, it's time.